Hello, welcome to Lost in Movies. I'm Alec Kerr, the film critic for the Conway Daily Sun, and uh, this week I'm joined by... Jason, uh, back again for another fun episode. Yeah, and so uh, this year, on February 16th, I am turning 40. Congratulations. Thank you. And so I wanted to commem commemorate it, that's a big word, <laughs> um, by choosing one movie for every year that I've been alive as my favorite movie of the year. And I asked you to join me in doing that. It was so much fun coming up with that list. Yeah, I, I and you turned 40 last year, so we're going to briefly touch on 82. Yeah. So what's your, just shout out your 82. E.T. Yeah. E.T. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to take, take a left turn here. Oh. Tron. Wow, see, it was a debate. <laughs> I thought we were going to be bashed, but yeah. Tron's an excellent yeah. pick. Yeah, for uh, real. And then just as a fun little aside, uh, the movie that was number one when I was born was Tootsie. Okay. Which actually came out in 1982 in December, but it was so popular that even in February it was still a number one movie. All right. So yeah. there we go. There we are. All right. So 83. Um, <coughs> my number one for uh, for 83 was Return of the Jedi. My uh, excellent choice. I have to go with uh, Lampoon's Vacation. That, that's my. That was my. That was my <laughs> runner up. Yeah. Um, it was kind of a foregone conclusion that Return of the Jedi was going to be mine. Because I was named after Alec Guinness. It was like, it was like fated. It was destiny. Yep. Yep. And oddly enough, that was the first one I saw. Okay. Because my parents had a, a VHS copy of it. Didn't have the other ones. So that's so, just where you started So I just journey. jumped in. And because those movies are episodic, it's fine. Like, yep. I was just like, oh, okay. So there's like a couple robots in the desert and they're going to see this Jabba guy. Okay. That, that's where we yeah, are. I got this. Yeah. yeah I got this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, who's this guy? He's saving those people? That's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. I, I agree. No, Lampoon's for me, that's been a family tradition since I can remember is, you know, my dad is Clark Griswold. Yeah. So it always, that just hits home for me. So I gotta get All right, there. so, uh, well, why don't you go first? What's right. your 84? 84, Red Dawn. Okay, all right. Yep. Not a huge fan of that one, but all no, right. Patrick Swayze is just... Classic to this day. I'll still rewatch it. Yeah. Um, just that great American fight. You can't kill the Wolverines. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. Red Dawn. Red Dawn. Uh, I had to go with. I mean, if you haven't, you haven't guessed. I had to go with Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Ghostbusters was just one of those like staples of my childhood. Uh, my first day of kindergarten, I was shy and awkward. Like big surprise there, and removed and like out on the verge of tears, and then like couple of kids came up to me and said, hey, you want to play Ghostbusters? I was like, I found my people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Yes, yes I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, you have to be Egon. And I was like, oh. And then I realized I was Egon. So, you know. <laughs> so it just kind of fit the role. Like, oh, I'm Egon. I am Egon. I am Egon. <laughs> I am. Yeah, that's who I am. The older I got, I was like, man, Harold Ramis is hilarious. Like, he steals so many lines in that oh, movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. 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 Um... So, what's your 85? Oh, the Goonies. Goonies, yeah. I can't, you know. Yep. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. It's, how can you not love the Goonies? Oh, well, it's, I still, I, my list is all the movies that I will still rewatch today. Yeah. Um, may not be my favorite movie of that year, but they yeah, all. Yeah, that's what, that was kind of the criteria it, it, for it, this. It was like movies, like, not necessarily, these aren't necessarily going to be the best movies of the year. It's just the movies that really hit you, the ones exactly, that yeah, you have the, nostalgia the, the for. That have stuck with us for our lifetime. Yeah. I mean, these are still movies. Like, The Goonies, I'll rewatch that at least once a year. I have the games, and it, 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 which are incredibly hard if you've never played the board game. Yeah, the I have the, the Goonies insane. board game. Like, I haven't had a chance to even sit down and play it yet. <laughs> you uh, need hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I went with, I don't know if people can figure it out. I went with Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah. Uh, th that is a movie that I have watched so many times, and every single time, like that's the final sequence when, they're, when he's finally going back, I get engrossed every single time. I'm like, is he going to do it? Yeah, is he going to make it? <laughs> and there are so many things that as I've gotten older, like little jokes that are just like, oh, that, oh that's what they're doing there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, it's a movie that I've grown with. And that whole trilogy is amazing. It, I, I, hands down. I agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. To 86. 86. The Labyrinth. Yeah, I know. Labyrinth was, my, was in my number two position. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but I went with uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's, it, it, see, I was torn on Ferris Bueller's because that is another movie that I absolutely love. But uh, The Labyrinth, I yeah. mean, for the kids growing up, I remember watching, you know, showing that to my girls, and they are still in love with that movie to this day. So it's. It was like, hey, you remind me, you remind me of the babe. What babe? <laughs> so uh, and that's the weirdest collection of talent ever. Oh, for real. Because it was a script by Terry Jones of Monty Python. Yep. It was produced by George Lucas. <laughs> it's directed by like, Jim Henson. Yeah, it's, and it stars and has music by David Bowie. Yeah, like, it, you how could go that, wrong? It's how amazing. did that collection of people come together? It's so bizarre. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it so works. So bizarre, but it's so much fun, even yeah. today, to watch it. Because the talent that that Jim Henson possessed yeah. is just unmatched. Right. Yeah. Uh, and as for Ferris Bueller, like as a child of the 80s, you couldn't escape John Hughes films. Like, oh, no way. They absolutely yeah. shaped us as adolescents, yep. like completely. And I almost went with The Breakfast Club, but again, I couldn't not go with Back to the Future. Yep. Uh, and Ferris Bueller is just like, when, when you're a kid, he's like, oh, that's the kid I want to be. And then you grow older and you realize you're Cameron. Oh, I, oh yeah. I, <laughs> and I had, I had Ben Stein as a teacher. Like oh, the Bueller, yeah, yeah. Bueller. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was hilarious. It looked just like him, sounded like That's him. That's great. It was great. Yep. All right. So yeah, the older I get, I'm like, yep, I relate more with, with Cameron yep. every <laughs> single year, more and more. Uh, he's just going to keep calling. Yeah, he's just going to keep calling me. <laughs> Uh, so 87, I went with <coughs> Spaceballs. Oh, man. I, I was really torn with this one. Yep. But I, I had to go with Spaceballs because it's, it's, there's only three movies in my lifetime that Mel Brooks has directed. It was Spaceballs, Men in Black, or Men, not Men in Black, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, yep. and Dracula Dead and Love It. And if I'm going to represent Mel Brooks, you got to go with Spaceballs. I agree. Uh, my, again, my daughter's absolute favorite Mel Brooks movie. I showed it to them when they were kids, and which probably I shouldn't have done, but I think it's pretty hilarious. Yeah, they, you know that's what? like one of their you favorite know, movies. Of granted, all time. it's it's '80s PG, but it's still PG. It's not bad. It's not it's bad. Not, it's not too bad. They they say the S word a couple times. <laughs> they say the F word once. It's fine. Yep. Yep. I had to go with Raising Arizona. Oh, that's a classic. Yeah. I mean, Nicolas Cage. It's just so good. And yeah. That final and it's battle brothers. scene with the yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, they've made my list a few times, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> and just that that one sequence, and it's like, am I really engaged in a chase over diapers? Oh, a hundred percent. You <laughs> are. You're like, get it, get it, and then he snipes it off the ground. You're like, yeah. <laughs> and then like John Goodman coming out of the mud in oh, the rainstorm. Man. There's just, I've only seen, honestly, I've only seen that movie once. Oh, it's and I can, so but good. I can tell you sto things about it because yeah. it's that good. It's, it's just so good. Yeah, in embedded in my brain from yeah. that one time. It's a great, great it's so movie. Good. It's very entertaining. So good. Yeah. Uh, oh. And then '88. I love this one. This one was a hard one. I went with Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's excellent choice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because. Obviously, there were films before and after that integrated live action with animation. Yeah. Um, at least it, with 2D animation, nothing has come close to doing what Roger Rabbit has. It's no, like it's... Everything is so perfectly integrated. And it was mind-blowing to see as a kid. You're like, oh my god. And yeah. it's the only time Disney and Warner Brother characters have ever interacted together. Yep. And even that was like mind-blowing. Like Mickey and... and Bugs talking, Donald and Daffy talking together. Yeah, it, was, it, was like, it was just a hodgepodge of everything, all of it. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, you get to Toontown and yeah, and it blew my mind. Like when my a little kid mind realized that Judge Doom was Doc Brown. I'm like, wait a second. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Uh, that was my first introduction to Bob Hoskins. Bob Bob Hoskins. Hoskins. That's yeah. right. I love him. So good. Yeah, he, yeah. he's made my list little down the line in the character but. yeah so what's yours oh i had to go with dirty rotten scoundrels oh yeah um yep. i remember getting that movie back when mcdonald's used to give away vhs movies with, oh like, wow with uh your happy meal purchase yep. and stuff so i got candy or er, candy land with um i forget who was in it and dirty rotten scandal scoundrels yeah. came wow. with it and that was my first introduction to like the uh, the heist 
and yeah. oh, that yeah. kind of thing. So I just yeah, and that has one of the like all time great comedy twists. Oh my, oh my god, it's so good. It's she so burns great. him so good yeah. at the end, and when he plays Rupert, it's just hilarious. Yeah. That that movie cracks. There was me a up. remake done a couple of years ago with uh, really yeah with, and it was gender swapped, and it didn't work. At yeah, all. No, it, I wouldn't even. It didn't work at all. Why would you touch that movie? It's yeah. genius. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's so good. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I, I, this year was hard. Cause I almost went with Die Hard, but it, 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 was that in your running at all? Yeah, Die yeah. Hard was definitely in my yeah. running because that's I love Die Hard. Yeah. I mean, but, but yeah, that's an excellent it, like, choice. It's super and Michael hard Caine to and, do. and Steve Martin together. It's just they're hilarious. Yeah. It works so well. It Works so well. Oh. Um, nineteen eighty nine. Like I, I, I bet everyone's gonna assume that I went with Batman, <laughs> but I didn't. I went with. Uh, Say anything. Okay. Uh, you're familiar with this movie? I don't know. Do you know, uh, have you seen the John Cusack image with him with the boombox? Yes. That's Say Anything. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, I love John Cusack. Uh, he did so many movies in the 80s. This he was did. like his best 80s teen romance. And it's just like a very simple teen romance, just done so well. And John Cusack's character, Lloyd Dobler, he's like, the he's like the goal like hey if you want to be like a good boyfriend good good husband this is the this model is, this is the model. the model yeah okay yeah no i don't know that one too well yeah no we should watch it sometime I, i'll have to check it's it out really I'm, not a, I'm a pretty good i like john hughes flicks um till 89 yeah back to christmas vacation oh all right which all is right. Uh, you know still to this day a tradition we have to watch it at least once every christmas it just you know, and I, I always debate, and it, you have to, it depends on what my mood, it, mood is. Is the best vacation movie the original, or is it Christmas Vacation? So, they're both great. Yeah. I mean, the original Vacation's opened up that realm now, but Christmas Vacation is just something about, like, having the family coming over and dealing yeah. with all the, because we can all relate to that movie. Yeah. A million percent, like struggling at your job, the job's not giving you what you feel that you yeah, deserve, yeah, yeah. and it's just, it's great, yeah. And both those films have the Clark Griswold rant. Oh, yeah. But Christmas Vacation. It, unmatched. It, yeah, unmatched. it's great. So I heard a little backstory is that he had a hard time keeping that in line, so you only see that scene from the perspective behind all the guests, because they were all wearing yep. placards. And if you watch his eye line, you can it, see yeah, him going. Yeah, pop around to each one to get through yeah. it. So I found that pretty yeah, hilarious. That's yeah, that's great. It's great, yeah. And I was like, is that is that true? But if you watch his eye it's line, 100%, yeah. you can see him, you because they just, have different lines on oh, each yeah, of Oh, yeah, he'll chests. go from each, yeah, you can totally <laughs> tell what he's doing. It's great. Uh, yep. And uh, 90, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Fantastic. I had yep. to go with it because, again, as a child of the 80s and 90s, you, you could not be a fan of the Ninja Turtles. Oh, no, they were excellent. They were everywhere. Uh, I mean, and the great thing about that first movie is it was kind of a hybrid of what the original comic was and what the cartoon series was. But it was dark and gritty. Mm -hmm. It was made after Batman. They were kind of tr chasing Batman. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, let's try to do a Batman-like movie. And it holds up really well because it, it is actually kind of dark and gritty. Mm -hmm. And those Jim Henson costumes are fantastic. They're amazing. For they the are... time that that movie came out, it's unbelievable that it looks so good. Yeah. Like, it, it, you can't really tell their costumes. They're no, there are a couple of fantastic. times like they open their mouths too much and you can see. Yeah. The, but other than that, you like watch that. Like as a kid, you're like, the Ninja Turtles are real? <laughs> My daughter thought so. We drove yeah. through New York yeah. one time when she was about seven or eight and she was like, I wonder if I can get to see some Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I remember, Maybe. I, in, I remember in MGM uh, Studios uh, at Disney, they actually had a manhole that was like said Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on it. I was like, oh my God, that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we went 90? 90. Trimmers. Oh, that was my, that was in my number two <laughs> yeah. spot. I mean, I remember playing that game. Yeah. That became a game like lava is like, oh, you got to stay off. Trimmers are coming. So you oh, yeah, you got to jump on the rocks. Yeah. I mean, Trimmers is such an underrated yes. movie. It's, it's such an so underrated good. monster movie. Oh, it's fantastic monster movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's one of Ashley's, my wife Ashley's favorite movies. Yeah, I, I'm right up there. And it's funny because Kevin Bacon is like, 
he just hates that he's done that move. He's come around to it. You have to at this point. He, like, dude, he, it has become such a thing. Look at look at all the crap Trimmer movies now. Yeah, but I, I you know what? I love the whole franchise. I though. think they're great. Shrieker <laughs> Island, yeah. all of them are fantastic. They're just but yeah, terrible. Kevin Bacon has come around to it because I think at the time he was in a real lull in his career, and he was just mm. like, fine, I'll just take this monster movie. It's gonna be crap, dude. And so that was his that was his attitude making the movie. Yeah, and so now he's like had perspective on it, seen that it's loved, and this is the frustrating thing. They did a pilot, they shot a pilot for a Tremors series that was gonna star Kevin Bacon. Oh man, that The pilot been... exists and it didn't get picked up. Oh, that stinks, dude, yep. because I would be all, oh my I know. God. There was, there was a Tremors series uh, with Michael Gross that was on the Sci-Fi channel. Yep. Um, it was pretty good. Yep. Yeah. No, I would love, yeah. I would love to see Kevin Bacon come back for a Tremors. It would be so do great. It, do it. Do yeah. it. We'll watch it. Yeah. We will watch it. You know what? Do a great reboot. I don't <laughs> care. Just, yeah, just do it. <laughs> I don't care if it's good. Just do it. Yeah. And for people that don't know what it Tremors is, because so I feel money. like a lot of people might not know what Tremors is. They're giant underground worms. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Just giant underground worms that sense movement. Yeah. So you can't and, get on the And as this franchise expanded, oh, they, 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 they... Yeah, they get insane. They get insane. You have all the different like versions. It's just nuts. Yeah, they start flying at yeah. some point, and it's crazy. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> so 1991. This was a tough one for it me. It was, yeah, very hard. Uh, I went with, and this is probably going to surprise people. I went with Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Bogus Journey, I went with really? Bogus Journey, because I really love Bogus Journey. Because, and don't get me wrong, I love Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. But I feel like Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey is one of the, the best comedy sequels because the problem with sequels and the problem with comedy sequels is that you're repeating. Yes. And when you repeat a joke a second time, it's, it's never as funny. It's not funny, yeah. But the time travel aspect of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey gets thrown out the window yep. and they're just doing this completely outlandish thing. They go to heaven, they go to hell. Yeah, they, they got robots they got, that have taken their yeah, place. Evil, yeah. yeah, evil robot usses and <laughs> yeah. they have to make good <laughs> robot usses and they meet an alien named Station. Yep. They become best friends with the Grim Reaper. It's such a bonkers sequel it that is. I'm like, I might like it a little bit more just because it's so left field. Yeah. Yep. Like, what you expect it to be. Like, oh, they're going to go traveling through history again. No, nope. not this time. <laughs> they get killed. The only, <laughs> thing that, the only thing that disappoints me is there's not enough Carlin in it. Mm. Um, he's there in the beginning, and then he just disappears. Yep. Um, which is kind of true of the, of the original, but, like, he just had more of a presence, and he had more lines. Uh, but other than that, like, love it. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I had to go uh, Hook. Mm. I had to go with Hook. Yep. Bob Hopkins, yep, Hopkins, Hopkins yep. yep. It's Smee. I'll yep. never hear Smee. Smee. <laughs> Time yep. for Smee. <laughs> <laughs> he just grabbing all the jewels. All the jewels falling out of his pant legs. It's great. I remember us seeing that as a kid, though, and even as a kid, just being like, mm -mm. I don't, mm -mm. like there are a couple moments, like when the the clock with the the giant clock tower alligator oh, comes yeah. out. I'm like, and then he disappears. I'm like, even as eight, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. No, I agree. That's he just, dumb. He just falls on him, doesn't chew him up or no. nothing, but he's like, even a, just gone. Even like, as uh, like an eight-year-old, I'm like, mm, mm -mm, that's dumb. So I remember <laughs> the first time watching that, I watched it on repeat for yeah. like 20 times. Like, yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, and Robin yeah. Williams, and I mean, Robin Williams and everything he does is amazing. Yep. But there's like this great like moment of just pure like, just pure like quiet acting where he's there and one of the Lost Boys is just like feeling his face and oh, moving his face yes. and trying to get his... Oh, there just, you are, there you Peter, are. Like, when he finally gets into like smile. Such, yeah. such this magical Beautiful. moment. Yeah, that's yeah. a great movie. So yeah. My kids do the same. They yeah. re it. And the it. other thing that I, as a kid, I was just like, no, was when they killed Rufio. I was like, no. Yes, man. Yeah. I, that was one of the first movies that had me tearing like yeah. a, just uncontrollably sobbing. Was yeah. Rufio dying? Yeah, I'll never forget it. Yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, and I almost went with Adam's Family for this year, but I actually prefer the sequel. Yeah. The problem with the se the sequel is that it came out in 1993, and there's a certain movie coming up in 1993 that's kind of a biggie. <laughs> I don't. I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. Probably. 93. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we're gonna be there's there in a little really, bit. Yeah, we got just two more. Uh, so 1992, I went with Wayne's World. 
fantastic movie. Yeah, yep. and that's the yep. movie that got me into Saturday Night Live. I'm like a huge Saturday Night Live fan, but like yep. I watched that, and then like I think my dad was like, "Oh, you know, this came from like a, a TV show," and I was like, "What? A TV show?" <laughs> <laughs> and then like that opened up a whole new world. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, and it's such, it's like, and there's been so many of those, like, Saturday Night Live <laughs> movies Excuse that me. just aren't, they're just rubbish. Like, you try to take a, oh a, a, a five-minute sketch and turn it into a movie, and it doesn't work. No. But Wayne's World is just so funny. It's got this real strong satirical edge. It's self-aware. It's meta before meta was even really a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah, that's the first movie I could recall them breaking the fourth wall and just speaking to you as the audience. Yeah. You know? Like, you know, Ferris Bueller did it, but, like, this was just, like, talking to the audience and also, like, acknowledging, oh, hey, this is a movie. Just a movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love 92. I think the best Western ever created, Unforgiven. Oh. Uh, Clint yep. Eastwood. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's... There's a, a speech near the end of that when he's talking about, like, real gunfights and things like that. It's just such a, yeah, underrated, quiet amazing yep. western that uh captivates me yep. to this day western really isn't my genre i haven't watched a lot of westerns but like yeah yeah unforgiven unforgiven yeah i think one of the best ones ever made so. yeah and from around the same time i think it was like i think it was 91 um there's tombstone mm. that's another great one oh, from, yes. this, from this era oh yes the Western's kind of a dead genre, but it kind of had a resurgence in the early 90s it for did. a little bit. Yep. I mean, yeah. you had Kevin Costner do... Um, he did his Wyatt, Wyatt Earp movie, which yeah. Which I thought was yeah. amazing. Yeah, you had the dueling Wyatt Earp movies. Hollywood's weird like that, where you have two movies at the same it time. It is, yeah. Uh, so my... All right, 93. My, nine, number one for 93 is Jurassic Park. I yeah. mean, you can't... No. I, it's a monster, literally. It is a monster. What a fantastic movie. Yeah. I remember watching that in the drive-in. Oh, nice. We actually went to see Dennis the Menace, and it was a double feature. Dennis the Menace followed up by Cliffhanger, Ooh. and Jurassic Park was playing on the screen next to us. Oh. So I didn't care about Dennis the Menace. I yeah. was listening to the car beside me watching Jurassic yeah. Park, and it was awesome. And that's the thing, like, yeah. it felt like in the 80s and 90s, it was like every other week, they were like, oh, we discovered a new dinosaur, oh, we discovered a new dinosaur. So, like, by the time you got to Jurassic Park, like, kids were, like, dino crazy. Oh, yeah. And that was also, like, the first time I went to a quote-unquote scary movie. Not that, like, Jurassic Park is, like, a horror movie, but I remember being like, oh, my, am I going to am I gonna be able to handle this? Like, it felt like kind of like a rite of passage. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that... It was, I mean, it's intense for a little kid. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I, I was 10 seeing that. <laughs> yeah. And, like, that, yeah. and I remember, like, getting to the T-Rex attack scene and just being like, oh, my God. Yeah. And those effects still hold up so yeah, well. solid. Solid. You know, I... I enjoy most of the rest of the, the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movies, but like, you could stop at that first one because that movie is just absolute perfection. I agree. It's a fantastic yeah. movie. Um, that one was on my list, uh, but I had to go with What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Oh, that's a great movie. My first yeah. introduction to DiCaprio and Johnny Depp, yep. who have been two actors that I've followed for the rest of my you know, yeah. life still, I mean, DiCaprio was... Yeah, I mean, he got his first Oscar nomination on that movie. Yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic yeah. movie, so... And I was also kind of one of those movies early on, where it's like, because already at 93, Johnny Depp had gotten the label as like, oh, he's the one who does the weird stuff. Yeah. And that was like, oh, wait, he can just do a normal guy yeah. and do it really well and yep. be interesting. He doesn't well, he's have one of to those be weird. Rare, rare actors that are leading man character driven yeah like you don't he's not like a tom hanks who's a leading man no. but he's always just tom hanks right johnny depp is a leading character actor he's, right he's a rare breed he's a very rare breed because yeah. he made the choice he very easily could have been like a, a marquee idol oh yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah and just done yeah he could have been a, a tom cruise very easily very easily and he just like you know what no i'm gonna be a weird character yeah. actor and then being a weird character actor made him it, yeah. The marquee guy. And he's, he doesn't always nail it, but man, when he does, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. And he's just so good in What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Yeah. And yeah. Heartbreaking, beautiful movie. Uh, 94. 94. 
94 is one of the all-time great years for film. Like, I could list all, like, you got Pulp Fiction, Shawshank Redemption, uh, Forrest Gump. Like, it's a loaded year. Oh, yeah, it's stacked. It's Uh, tough. The Mask. So it was really hard for me. I actually had The Mask. I actually had written up a whole thing for The Mask. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to go with Clerks. Yeah. (sighs) Yes. Uh, Clerks. And... It wasn't even my first introduction to Kevin Smith, mm. but I worked at a video store. I worked at a convenience store. So it just... So, so much of it hit me. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, while I was working at a video store, kind of inspired by Clerks, I wrote my own script set at a video store. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And then it turned into a play, which you yep. did a radio version of. I did. Of. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yep. So, like, and last year, and this, was, this made me so happy, I got to tell him, because I interviewed him. I got to That's tell him, right. like... Hey, you know, I did a, I wrote a, a script and I uh, got it performed. He's like, "Well, good on you, good for you." Yeah. So like, I kind of had to do Clerks. That makes sense. Yeah, he, Kevin Smith's a big part of a. Uh, yeah. 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 Love Kevin Smith. We've been to see him twice now. Twice together. Yeah. And uh, each time is a blast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really want to go because he has his own movie theater now in Jersey. Yes. I really want to go check out his own movie. His yeah, movie that would theater. be cool. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna be in New York next year. It might be worth the detour. To yeah, I'm going to be in New York, Jersey too, because I have a cousin that's getting married. Actually, going to be in New Jersey, so, like, got to swing over. If I'm going to be in New Jersey, Jersey's not that big. You'll get there. Got to swing over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I went with Pulp Fiction. Yeah. My yeah. first introduction to Quentin Tarantino, and, boy, yeah, that, that one was, it took me, like, three or four times watching it to understand what I just watched yeah. when I was a kid, but it was just so, so good. Yeah, the and, storytelling and just, just the recon, you know, non-linear storytelling, oh. and the fact that you could do that and yeah. like and, and do it so well. Yeah, you know, you could try, but man, Tarantino's got a way of doing that that's just yeah, it's masterful. Story. And you could say, oh well, why is it told that way? Like, does it make any difference? And it has it changes the impact of some of the scenes. Because I think they're so. In the order. I, I think that it would be a completely different movie if you just watched it chronologically. Yeah. Uh, seeing how it all bounces around and it's just following all these different people at different times, yeah. but they're all in a react. You know, everything has a cause and effect throughout the movie. I just, and just, just so, so much and blew me away. Yeah, it's hard with Tarantino to pick a favorite. Um, yeah, it is. But <laughs> that one, well, that one probably is the most quotable of all of his movies. Oh, the for, Royale with cheese. Yeah, and hands the, uh, down. Yeah, you know. The the Christopher Walken wa- uh, monologue. Oh, the watch. He give me the watch. The, yeah, the, I mean the watch. The watch. <laughs> I always speech just love is, the way he says. Oh, you know, watch. He, he give me the watch. It's just the way he says, give me the watch. <laughs> it's like it's like it's one word. Yeah. <laughs> he give me the watch. Classic I carried that watch up my speech. Mm? Oh yeah. For five years I had that hunk of metal up my. Mm? <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Excellent. Um, so 95, you know, there are a lot of great movies that came out in 95, yes, but are. I had to go with a very personal choice. Mm. One with a goofy movie. A goofy movie. I went with a goofy movie. It's a great movie. It is a great yeah. movie. No, it's not obviously as as we said earlier. It's not going to be on anyone's 10 best yeah, of the year. Yeah, this is it, it's man to do the top the top number 1 movie for every year that I still wouldn't be done with this list. No. It's really hard to come up. Yeah. I I mean do it. Just go back through your life and look at all the movies yeah. each year. You'll be surprised how hard it becomes to narrow it down. Yeah, absolutely. And But uh, as I was doing this, I was like trying to make it somewhat autobiographical. So mm-hmm. it's like trying to hit like touchstones of my life. Yeah. And the first movie review I ever wrote was a seventh grade English assignment was to write a movie review. No and it was for a goofy movie. Okay. And so like I remember like being like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I did my research. I found out the animation <laughs> was done in France. So I put that little factoid in my yeah, review yeah. and I was like all proud of myself. Yeah. I don't even know how I found that out because there was no internet. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I must have found like I, I do think I, I had a subscription to um do you remember that it was Disney Adventures magazine? No. It was just like a little magazine for yeah. all things Disney related. So it must have been like a little factoid. A little tidbit in there. So I was like, yeah. all right, all right, I'm going to put that in my yeah, review. Yeah, all right. And uh, I still love it, though. It's such a fun movie. I haven't seen that one in a long, long time. Uh, but it, it was it was cute. I remember it yeah. being a great and, movie. But the, the great thing about it is the music is amazing. They had this fictional pop singer named Powerline. Hmm. And the songs, the Powerline pop songs, 
They're like kind of like a hybrid of like Prince and Michael Jackson. They're actually like great songs. <laughs> and uh, he was. I don't remember. And Powerline was uh, voiced by Tavin Campbell, who was a pop singer. Uh, from the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. You should revisit. Yeah, I'll have to check it out again. Yeah. I know Settley would love to to sit and watch that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should. I went with a, something a little more adult. Um, the Usual Suspects mm -hmm. for me. Yep. Um, again, into that heist style movie. That I those, do love those it. They just, I love them when I, they're well yep. done. And The Usual Suspects, the ending is one of the best twist endings. You know, you just, the first time around, you never get to see that movie the same way again. Yeah. You know, you only get to see it once. Right. And but, enjoy that one time. Because right. after that, you know. Right. You know, but, but then that, you can go back. Bit, yeah, exactly. And so, then pick up all and all the subtleties that the actor is giving you that yeah. you've never paid attention to. And he's so good. Like, uh, it's such a good flick. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's just also the perfect exa example of, like, an untrustworthy narrator. Oh like, yeah. So you know, like, you have to question everything he said everything, and everything he, you've seen. Right, because it's all coming from his perspective, and right. at the end, it really makes you tend to believe that none of it was true. Yeah. Because he's just picking things off the board to to build this story around. Right. I just in that, in that moment. That, yeah, it was so mind blowing to me. It was just like what? Yeah. What? Yeah. In that moment, <laughs> yeah. just where you know, and spoilers here. Yeah. When, yeah. when uh, if you don't know the, yeah. the yeah. ending to the usual suspects, um, when just Kevin Spacey is walking and, and he, he just he just loses his turns limb, it into it, loses and he lights just, the boom, cigarette oh, and away he goes yeah. with and with his poof, lawyer or whatever. Gone. Yeah. Poof, like that, he yeah. was gone. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And just uh, Chad Palminteri, like, figuring it out and just being like, oh, no, damn it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was very few movies to this day have ever come up with with quite a hook. Yeah. You know, this, they try, but, man, the usual suspects. It got me. It yeah. had to have get it, got everybody the first time. It yeah. was just too good. Too well. I, I heard, like, a factoid about it the, uh, in the lineup scene uh, where they're all, like, giggling. Oh, it's all... Not one of them's in character. No, yes. I, I think one of them was like farting. Yeah, I think Benicio like, del Toro Benicio. was just letting them fly. Yeah. And they couldn't keep it together, <laughs> so so they all just started breaking. Yeah, uh, and that's like, and they left it in, but it yeah. played so and, well yeah. because they don't, they didn't care. They, you know, they. And it's one of those films where it like actually is like the best performance from like people you would never like. Stephen Baldwin is not a good actor. No, but he is great in that Nails. movie. Yeah, Kevin Pollak is a great comedic actor, but he's doing good dramatic work in that movie. Oh, yeah. So it's like a movie that just elevates everybody. Yeah, everybody brought their A game to that movie, yeah. it felt, because yeah, it was, it's so yeah. well done. Uh, so let's see, what do <sighs> I have? 96 was a tough one for me. Um, and ultimately, well, why don't you go first? I'm interested. Oh, oh. The Long Kiss Goodnight, uh, Gina yeah. Davis. Yep. Oh, I, yep. my dad took me to see that in the movie theaters. And it blew me away. Yep. Just the action. The, the, it, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. We, we quoted, you know, chefs do that for yeah. years after yeah, that. Yeah. You know, it was like throw a knife into the, you know, chefs do that. Yeah. And, and just, yeah. yeah. And the, and, uh, that's one that people might not know. It's written by Shane Black. <sighs> Shane Black wrote uh, Lethal Weapon. Yeah. And he, for a while, he was the guy that wrote the action, action scripts. Like funny, you know, wisecracking. Oh, and Samuel Jackson and Gina Davis. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, but uh, oh. so Gina Davis uh, has amnesia, but she right. was this assassin. Yeah, and so, like assassin spy. They got shot in the and head so, and woke up and so it's started her a regular life. Yeah, so it's her getting her memory back. She oh. hires this PI to help her Samuel get her memory Jackson. back. Samuel Jackson, oh, he's so good. And then they just go on this adventure together. Oh, and Man, like, is it good. And you gotta love Sam Jackson in that time period oh. because like post Pulp Fiction, he started getting all these roles yeah. where he became like the sidekick. Like, oh. Die Hard with a Vengeance, yep. like, yep. just him as, like, the action sidekick. I love that era of, of Sam, I, Sam Jackson. I, oh, I do as well. I mean, yeah. that, I think that might be the movie that just made me love Samuel Jackson, because that character is so funny. And it's just such a weird combination, Gina Davis and Samuel yeah. Jackson. Gina Davis is an action star? Yeah. And she's I, awesome! She's awesome. Like, and this is sort of where you have, like, sexism in, uh, in Hollywood. If... In any just world, she should have become a, ma a massive action star because she was great in that, and she could have done a dozen more. I would have watched oh, yeah. that character oh, over I, and over I'm again. I'm so bummed that they didn't 
follow yeah. up on that character because yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. They yeah. opened the door to a whole world for her and never stepped yeah. through it. Because it, it it didn't do great, which it is, didn't. But you know, but, whatever. It found a huge cult following. I, it, yeah, it found me, and I've been watching it for years. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great. <laughs> I think movie. it's a fantastic one. You know, we can actually slow down. We can talk a little bit more if we oh, want. Oh, right on. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Uh, right so through. number uh, my I haven't even talked about my ninety six. Yeah, what do you got? Uh, I went with Scream. Scream. Yeah. Oh man. So my my daughter just discovered Scream, and is in love with it. Like, are you gonna start doing the whole franchise? Oh, we did. We've already yep. gone through the whole franchise. Six um, man looks freaking good. Yeah. yeah. I I kind of felt that they should have just let it die. Yeah. But. With the with Jenny Ortega getting such a glow up now, yeah. I mean, it just kind of makes sense that they keep pushing yeah. with that in because they've already got her in place and they yeah. got the other actresses in place. Yeah, and it was pretty good. The last one the, wasn't bad. Yeah, and and it's finally a shift in location. Yeah, they did do a shift in location to Hollywood, but but in New York, man, like yeah, that's good. In the sub, the, yeah, the little yeah. the clip I saw yeah. in the subway, I was like, oh, yeah, that is creepy yeah but so <laughs> i i didn't grow up as a horror kid mm. um i was kind of a little scaredy cat but something about scream intrigued me and I, I think like i saw like a siskel and ebert review or something the idea of it being both like an actual legit slasher film but also kind of a satire of it at the same time right like that really intrigued that's where me. all the rules to surviving yeah. the horror movie came from and, and now that's that's like yeah very well known, and so the know. fact that it was sort of a comedy i was like oh well maybe i can watch this so it was kind of my entry point entry into point horror, okay into horror yeah and then from there i was like oh well maybe i should go watch nightmare on elm street and then now well, maybe I should go watch Friday the Thirteenth, and yep. like maybe I should go watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and like from there it kind of went out. Yeah, and yep. it's still my favorite horror franchise because it was my first. So I, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my daughter, that's that was kind of her first introduction. That's what her, got her excited about horror movies. Yeah, was Scream. And I'm like, well, see, there you go. Yeah. They're like, they're, they're, they're not all that bad. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and, uh, and, and spoiler side note here. It's very upset about Randy dying in number oh, two. Oh, man. Still, still devastated about that all these years later. <laughs> yep. 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 Uh, okay, 90, 97. Oh, man, I love this movie. The Fifth Element. Oh, yeah. My first, like, real, like, crush on a girl was Mila Jovovich oh, yeah. from that movie. I just, I remember I could not get her out of my head for weeks after. Yeah. And it was at that age where, yeah, you, you know, you're just yeah. still kind of figuring these things Monkey out pass. as a young man. And, you know, so yeah, it was the fifth element. Yeah. Um, Chris Tucker is hilarious. Just, yeah. Just a solid, great movie. And it's also a sci-fi it, movie. I love it. And also like, it's one of those sci-fi films that has completely visualized its future. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 8-Bar was a little bit from Blade Runner, yeah. but uh, just like that visual, like, and I can pull it up in my brain right now, of the floating Chinese restaurant. I was just going to say the noodle cart that yeah. pulls up to his apartment. And just the, it it's floating, awesome. it's so perfect. <laughs> like that, it's so like, great. And that, just that one image just makes you like, go, what else is going yeah, on in this world? what's happening here? Yeah. I love it, yeah. Yeah. And just the flying cars, like, I don't, really don't think there's been a movie that's done flying cars as well as, as, well that. as that. No, no. definitely not. Because the ch the chase scene with that is it's awesome. And then I realized um, when I did a Star Wars marathon that Revenge of the Sith blatantly rips off that sequence. Really? Yeah. You can, like, look at it. It's almost the exact same editing. They lack the exact same pacing. <laughs> they just took old stock footage yeah. and just, yeah, just uh, <laughs> posed the, yeah. the, the vehicles yeah. onto it. Go, I, I, I they could have. They I don't do think that anyone's done it, but I think somebody needs to do a side-by-side. -side. Maybe I'll do it. It's so, so similar. I've, I've, never, like, I've never caught the, the correlation between yeah. that, but... Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. With uh, the train and everything? Maybe not the yeah. train, but, like... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Which is, it's not gotta, exact, but like the, the it's very similar rhythms. So hmm. yeah, I'll have to check that out. That's yeah. interesting. Um, um, what do you got? My ninety-seven is Gross Point Blank. Oh God, what a good flick! And this is Love a, this is one movie. of those sort of underrated films. It is, yes, that people might not John know Cusack about. John Cusack is fantastic. So good. Yeah, what a great flick! And so the premise of this, and this was 
1997, going back to the idea of dueling movies, yep. 1997 had two high school reunion movies. There was this and Romy and Michelle's high school I was going to say, it had to have been Romy and Michelle's, And they right? came out within like weeks of each other. Okay. Two totally different uh, Two totally different movies. Movies. Equally great. But yeah, equally great. Um, but, but so yeah, John Cusack is a, a hitman yeah. who goes to his 10-year high school reunion because there happens to be a hit in town. So, you know, two two That's birds, right, there stuff. is a hit, that's why he goes, yeah. that's right, yeah. And he's all reluctant and uh, yep. his sister is in it as his secretary, Joan Cusack, and they have a funny dynamic. Alan Arkin is his therapist who's just like, just stop calling me, please, yep. please, I beg you, stop <laughs> calling me. Uh, oh. Dan Aykroyd's in it as like a competing hitman who wants to start a <laughs> union. <laughs> Oh my! Uh, it's such a good movie, and, and it's just. I would have never put John Cusack as an action star. Not yeah. that it's so much like an action movie, but I, I mean, yeah. I guess it is. It's got its moments. Yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah, that movie's fantastic. Yeah. gross point blank. Yep. Yeah, great. for the longest time, great, great I said movie. he was my celebrity man crush. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's because he's kind of got that perfect balance of like snarky, cool, but he's vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, he's just. It's just a great movie. I and agree. it's also Mini Drivers in it. It's the same year as uh, Good Will Hunting. Yep. I think this actually came out first. Yep. So it was a good year for Mini Driver. I almost went with Good Will Hunting for my 97. That's a good flick. It's a, yeah. It's a good flick. That is an excellent flick. But yeah, that's a great movie. Gross Point Blank. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go watch that yeah. later. I haven't uh, seen it in so a long time. 98. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, I, I said earlier that I, I pulled the mask off my list. Yeah. And it was so I could put a different Jim Carrey movie on. And All I right. went with The Truman Show. Oh, good flick. Yeah. That's the first Jim Carrey movie that it's, it wasn't quite as slapstick comedy. It was a little more right. serious. Showed off a little more his acting skills, which yep. he's incredible. Oh, he's, a, he's, he's an, an amazing incredible actor. actor. Holy yep. crap. Um, take away all the you know, Ace Ventura and all that silly crap. He's got some real yeah. chops. And this was like the first movie I saw it. it was, I was 15. It was kind of the first movie where I was just like, oh, this is like, this is a satire. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time like, I was like, oh, I was picking up on things and it made me feel like I was smart, that I yeah. was getting what it was doing. Yeah. And this was a movie that was way ahead of, because reality TV wasn't really a thing yet. There no. was real world, but like this was like. Yeah, this was before the whole massive jump that the reality TV yeah. has taken, but yeah. It yeah, was and so it was very well like predictive of like what our society is like today. Yep. Uh, but just all the little like nuances of like how it is shot, um, the fact that everything on the set is product placement. Yep. Uh, so you can actually, when it cuts to people that are watching it in their TV, uh, in their like living rooms on their TV, you can see that they have some yeah, of the they props. Brought, yeah, 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 yeah. It was great. It's just a great they'll, movie. They'll throw in a commercial right yeah. in the middle of a conversation, yeah. like this what, new peeler, you should like, get one. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, like, who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, great. It's great. Um, oh, 98. What an imp influential movie to me, The Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah. I mean, yep. and, The you Dude know, Abides. The Dude Abides, yeah. And uh, I remember we, my cousins and I, were driving to Florida yeah. with their parents, and they had like an old, you remember the little 12-inch TVs that had the VHS tape in the bottom yep. of it? Yep, yep. We had one of those set up in the van, and that's what we watched. Nice. And I remember my aunt, like, how many times are they going to say the F word in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, a yeah. bunch of young teenagers yeah. going to uh, just oh my god yeah and yeah it's been it's the big Lebowski it's the big Lebowski and it, this is how I feel about that movie like certain Coen Brothers movies the first time you watch it you're like yeah that was good it was a little weird mm -hmm. but then you're like you keep thinking about it be like I need to watch that again yeah. and the more you Something watch it something about him brings you back like the more you watch the better it gets and like oh, hands I down. just love Sam Elliott as just like the, the <laughs> yeah. coming in there and just well the uh, dude abides Sioux City Sarsaparilla <laughs> that'll do <laughs> yeah it's it's oh, such a weird quirky Goodman. movie yeah is. Shut up, Donnie! Oh, but you're out of your element, Donnie! <laughs> oh, it's so good. He's just, yeah, his character in that is just... I, I did a project in high school where I had to um, create a restaurant. Yeah. 
So I had to staff that restaurant. So all of my staff members were fictitiously named after all the characters nice. of the Big Lebowski. So the, the head chef was Walter Soapchick. You know, yeah, it's just that's you great. go down the line. So yeah. Yeah, and it's so great with that because you have Steve Buscemi. And this was something they did intentionally after him being so hyperverbal in Fargo. They were like, <laughs> you know what, you're not, you're, you're not going to talk at all. Oh, and he just, and he's, Shut up, Donnie. Yeah, he's one of the fan favorites. Is, is, <laughs> and he says says like, nothing. He, he like, says maybe 10 words. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> oh, not uh, even full sentences. He, yeah. he maybe gets one full sentence out of yeah. that whole movie. Uh, so 1999, another year where it's just <sighs> like a stacked year. So brutal. Where it's honestly one of the best years ever in film so, history. This was my absolute best time ever in a movie theater um, was 99. Um, Cause I went in and I watched the matrix. Yep. And then I snuck in to fight club. Oh, and that's it a was good just day. Like the best movie going experience I've ever had day. in my life was yeah. going from that one to that one. So like, which is, which is your number one? Oh, Fight Club. Fight Club. We did it. Yeah, we did we? Did we? Yes. <laughs> All right. I was worried if we would get one. Uh, Fight Club. Fight Club. And this is the thing with, with Fight Club. Not many people saw it theatrically because it was terribly marketed. You couldn't tell what it was. No, you couldn't. I remember seeing the bill. I lived in California at yeah. the time, and the billboards were everywhere. Yeah. And it was just them two facing off with a bar of soap in the yeah. middle. Like, what the f is yeah. this movie about? Yeah. No clue. And then the trailers made it seem like it was an action movie or a fight movie, and that's not what it is. And so oh, I feel like I the trailers made it seem like, oh, this is just some dumb fight movie, and nobody went to see it because the trailer didn't show any of the satire. No. Um, it, oh. And here's the thing, and I, I don't know if we, we – let's not spoil it just in case there are some people in the world that haven't seen Fight Club. Oh, man. Uh, if you but I remember do seeing it, it right in, now. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing it in theaters, and when you get to that twist, Woo! it – it was one of the Blows. few times where I literally had my jaw drop. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I was a like, million percent. Wait, so, like, leading up to it, you're like, wait, wait a minute. Wait, what? What the heck is going on? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're just like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. It is, yeah. It and takes because, the blood right out of your face. And it's because so good. nobody saw it, like, I was on, I, I remember being on, a, on the phone with a friend and just being like, you need to see Fight Club. And he's like, why? I can't tell you. Yeah, you, I can't tell you. you have to. You must watch you have it. To. And it's because so of that twist, good. he's like, oh, oh what's so God, good about it? It's so just good. some dumb fight movie. I'm like, no. there's a twist. Oh, man. I just, just you've got to go. Yeah. And like, and talk about like rewatch value. I had this on like VHS. Yeah. And so it was very hard to do freeze frames on it. But there are, oh, the throughout blips. the movie, the blips. Oh, yeah. Where, Beautiful. Where, where Tyler Durden just shows up before. In and out. Yeah. Like at the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. The guy's sitting there making copies and. Yeah. flashes in and like so and i remember a couple of other flashes of some things yeah that yeah, yeah. Tyler Dirt. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i remember like watching it and again this was like early days of internet so it wasn't <coughs> really out there right and so I remember seeing that blip and like wait what was that and then like going like click trying click, to try click, click. and i was like oh oh, oh yes <laughs> And then, like, Just. as you said, something that I don't necessarily want to see. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but when you watch the ending, you know what I mean? It's a hilarious joke. Yeah. Because, you know, splicing bits of those into yep, the, yep. the kid movie. Um, <laughs> you know? Oh, and, uh, and I want to just go back for a yep. little bit. But uh, for me, so many of the, so much of the music that I have fallen in love with. Thank you. I yes. have. I have fallen in love with because I heard it in a movie. Yes. So that was my first introduction to the Pixies and Where Is oh My Mind. Oh my. And I one was like, One of my this... absolute favorite songs of all time. Yeah. And yep. it's also, that is like one of the great uses of a song in a movie. Oh, dude. Yes. At the end when uh, the buildings start coming down. Yeah. And that song hits, it's yeah, impactful. I mean, yeah. that, yeah, that was the first time I would recall like, I like the soundtrack impacting me. Yeah. Just as much as the context of the yeah. movie. And has. I became obsessed with that song. I started yeah. putting it on like... Mixed yep. CDs, mixed tapes. You Emma know. Browning does an amazing rendition of that yep. song from uh, Sucker Punch. Yep, yep. Um, but then going, just going back to 1997 with Gross Point Blank, that movie has a fantastic yep. soundtrack, and that was like a major introduction to a lot of music for me. It's the first time I heard Blister in the Sun. Okay. Uh, first time I heard The Clash's Rudy, Rudy's Gonna Fail, mm -hmm. uh, or Rudy Can't Fail. Uh, just so, like, that was like a huge, like, and that just opened up a whole new world to me, so oh, where yeah. I started exploring like punk and new wave bands, and that's what I love about movies is that you can introduce. That's what's great about 
uh, Quentin Tarantino. I've gotten into just... so many bands oh, because yes. of Quentin Tarantino. Yep. Same. I have his soundtracks on downloaded. Yeah. For most of uh, all of Pulp Fiction soundtrack yeah. is just incredible. But every soundtrack he's ever used in every movie. Yeah. Yeah, like one band I got into because of Tarantino enjoy. was Davy Deaky Beaky Mitch and Titch or something like that. It was in uh, Death Death Proof. Okay. And there's a whole monologue about how great this band is, yep. and the, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna look on that band. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's your 2000? 2000. Oh man. Oh brother, where art thou? Oh, another. All right. Yeah, you're big. Uh, um. So yeah, I I loved big Greek, Cohen Brothers guy. I'm a big Cohen Brothers guy. They make some damn. Flicks. Yeah. And the style of this movie really blew me away because they took the Iliad. Yep. And they took that story and redid it in such a way that I thought was just was brilliant. I and loved it. The funny it. thing yeah. is, they've said, like, yeah, you know, we based it on the Iliad, the Odyssey, but um, sort of. We had, we've never read it. So they kind of just did touch that. Well, yeah. And you could tell they kind of took highlights, right. like the Cyclops and the Sirens. Right. And, the in journey this, in the, like, of like, Odysseus. Like, like, yes, and yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so I thought it was brilliant how they yeah. tied it together to and make the a, a new Talking oh, about the soundtrack music. is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, a few years ago, I, I wrote an article about great fictional bands that basically became real because this is a fictional band, but it charted. That album charted. Oh, man. Yeah. It became that a huge selling huge. album. you huge. Yeah. Yep. I have the I have that soundtrack at yeah. home because it's brilliant. And so it's a fictional band that basically became real. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Stars uh, Rock and it's, Candy Mountain. Uh, <laughs> and it's such a like and that was also kind of the movie that showed that there was a little bit more to George Clooney. Oh Because at that point he'd done he'd done from Dusk Till Dawn, he'd done some good movies, but this was just like, oh wait, George Clooney's an actor. Like he can and do a dang good one. A dang good one. Yeah, a dang good one. <laughs> Uh, yes. His character in that is so funny. Oh my and god! And Tim Blake I'm Nelson, John Turturro. Oh yeah, yeah. John Turturro. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! They're all. They're all. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm always quoting. Do you care for some gopher, Everett? <laughs> 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 Got a whole village of gophers. <laughs> yeah, that's another that one where you're like, so you're like, much. this is a weird movie. Like, I don't know if I like it, but then you're like, yeah, no, I love this. Oh, no, yeah, this, it just blew, everything about it was brilliant to me. I was yeah. like, ah, oh, and the Coen brothers. Yeah. I mean, again, they just keep finding ways to hook yeah. me into their uh, stuff. My number one, like, I was torn between a couple, but I had to go with Almost Famous. Good, good one. Yeah. I can see, I can definitely yeah. see why you went with Almost Famous, yeah. for sure. Because, yeah, because, like, it's about a music-obsessed kid who becomes yep. a journalist, and this is where I had already kind of decided that I wanted to be a film critic. So this was just like, this guy's me. Yeah, he's living the life. He's this doing, is what I want. This is what yeah, I want. Yeah. And like, I have a tattoo of a quote on my side. Like, <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, as Lester Bangs is so good. Yeah. Everybody in that movie is just perfection. Yeah. Uh, I was already a fan of Jason Lee because of Kevin Smith. He's the lead singer, or no, he's the, yeah, he's the lead singer of the band. He's perfect. It's just such a perfect, nostalgic time capsule movie. Mm. Yep, I agree. That yeah. is a fantastic movie. And then again, another fantastic soundtrack. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we're just hitting them. Yeah. All right, so last two yes. years. We got six minutes left, so we got time. Here we go. Oh, we nailed it. Uh, my 2001, this is this mine's is one of those ones where it's like deeply personal. I, I'm the same. Mine's way left field. Way left field. Josie and the Pussycats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, uh, all right. This is one of those things where there are definitely much better films that came out in 2001. Oh, yes. But I have been such a defender of this movie since it came out that I'm like, you know what? I have to keep defending it. I love this movie. I love the soundtrack. I love the satire of it. Alan Cumming as the record executive mm. is so funny. I just love this movie, and I am unapologetic. And this is the thing. I went and saw this movie. I was the only guy in the theater. And this is the time, like, late, you know, early 2000s, late 90s was not kind yep. to guys that might like girly things. So here oh, I was, yeah, like, I yeah, love this. That's and, like, sure. and so I couldn't really tell anybody how much I loved it because it would be like, <laughs> Oh, oh well, look at you! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 uh, uh, the, the, you gay or something? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, 
but I was like, you know what? I don't care. Yeah, I'm don't putting care. the poster up on my college dorm, and I so did. I felt that way because I, I really enjoyed um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show as a kid. Yeah. But like coming up through high school, I was like, I couldn't tell my friends about this movie because, oh, you like a movie about dudes all dressed in drag and things like that? I was like, well, no, not that's not the reason I like it. No, but, it, I mean, you know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah for real. Uh, yeah, and I, I had, because I, I worked at a video store, so I got access to movie posters. So I had I had the Josie the Pussycats movie poster in my nice. dorm room, and I would just be like, yeah, no, it's because they're hot. Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the movie. It's just yeah, the hot. movie's trash. Yeah, there you go. They're hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's the beautiful thing about getting older is yeah. you can let go of all that yeah. crap. Like, oh. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and it used to be like, I used to say, oh, it's a guilty pleasure. And I'm like, no, it's not a guilty pleasure. I love that I movie. I love it. <laughs> um, I went with a very off-brand, The Royal Tenenbaums. Oh, uh, that was my number two spot. Was I it really? Love, I love Wes Anderson. I oh love that God. movie. I, I do as well. It's just so quirky and weird, but the characters are also very rich. Yeah. And just beautifully told, I thought. Yeah. I think and it's what a, I love a about it, movie. I love about Wes Anderson, but particularly in this movie, is that it is such on the razor's edge between comedy and drama, and yes. you can switch between it oh, so like subtly. That. And they do, like, like think, think, Like, think, there's a the... moment where, oh, you know, so good. spoiler, Luke, Will, Luke Wilson uh, attempts suicide. Yes. And so he's in his deathbed, and they're all talking to him, and he's like, and so I think it's Ben Stiller's like, what was in the note? You know, was it sad? And he's like, well, yeah. it was a suicide <laughs> note, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> Really funny, but also really dark, and it's like that fine, fine line. And, and there's a few movies that follow that that kind of style, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, the Royal Tenenbaums, I just yeah, I love it. It's yeah. Quirky and beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a great introduction uh, to Wes Anderson. If you've never seen a Wes Anderson movie, that's a great one. Very yeah. particular style. Oh yeah. Everything is sym symmetrical. Have you yep. ever noticed that? Like oh, yeah. every frame is like perfectly framed. Oh yeah. To be it's, symmetrical. It's, it's a weird flick, yeah. but uh, it's, yeah, very extremely well um, done and extremely So why don't well you go first with 2002? <sighs> so because 02, my film's kind of obscure. I wish I could have found an obscure one for 02. This one was a tough year because I didn't, I had Spider-Man. Yep. The original Tobey Maguire yep, Spider-Man. Yep, yep. Great movie. Still to this day, I, I find it fantastic, but I was way into the Born Identity books. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. when the Born Identity came out, I was like, yes. Yes. And as far as the movies go, they're pretty solid. Yeah. I still find the book series blows never, them out never of read the water. the books. Oh, <coughs> but they're so good. But it's Born so I different. Yeah, but Born Identity was a revelation of a movie because yes, you're like, Matt Damon is an action hero. And, and He's great. Boy, did it solidify him as yeah. an action hero. Because, yeah, it was a weird choice, I thought, at the yeah. time. Like, really? Matt Damon? And the female what? lead in it, her name's Franca Patente. Like, I knew who she was Wonderful. because one of the first movies I ever saw when I went to college to study film was a movie called Run, Lola, Run. Okay. It's a German film, and it's kind of structured like a video game in the sense that it tells tells the story three times because each time the movie resets this, this woman has to get somewhere to do something to save her boyfriend huh. and she fails twice and each time it, she fails it like whoop, starts resets. over and then she like Ooh. kind of knows things from the last time and is able to do, it's it's an amazing movie you should mm, I'll check find that out. I have not seen that one yeah so it's I'll a great check, movie I'll check uh, that okay, out got a minute left mine is a movie called Igby Goes Down Igby Goes Down yeah. That sounds so familiar. It stars Kareem Culkin. It's kind of like a modern version of Catcher in the Rye. Okay. In that he is this private school student who just runs away, goes to the city, and is just trying to figure out who he is. It's got a great cast. Jeff Goldblum, Susan Sarandon, Ryan Phillippe, uh, Jared Harris, uh, Claire Danes, Amanda Peet. And it's just this really great, huh. snarky, coming-of-age story. Um, and I'm including it because when I went to Keene State, I finally was able to have access to movies that I never had access before because there was two theaters that showed indie films. Yep. And growing up in rural Maine, I didn't get to yeah, see these offbeat, quirky movies. Films. And this was a movie I never would have discovered. And I got to see it. Hmm. There was an on-campus movie theater that I was part of the film society. So I got to see movies for free, saw that movie, and instantly fell in love with it. 
and I was working at a video store, and so I convinced the owner of the video store to let me do a thing called Alex Picks, where I would go through, he would show me what movies were coming out, and I cherry-picked like obscure movies, yeah. and that was one of the ones I chose. Nobody rented it, and then it got put into the pile <laughs> to sell, and then I bought it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, all right, we, uh, we did it. Yeah, we did we're, it. We got like all five seconds left. Two. Woo! Fantastic. All right, so come back next week, and we will do 2003 to 2022. Yes. So come back and get Lost in Movies again. Hello, welcome to Lost in Movies. I'm Alec Kerr, the film critic for the Conway Daily Sun, and this week I'm joined by... Jason Stevens, man. Let's and, do this. And we're doing the second part of what we're calling uh, 40 Years, 40 Movies, because yep. I turned 40 last week. And so I chose one movie, one favorite movie for every year I've lived and asked Jason to do the same thing. We did the first 20 and the last time we did this, and now we're going to do the next 20 years, starting with 2003. So what's your 2003? Old school. Old school. Oh, you're my yeah. boy, Blue. You're my boy. Yeah. My children love it. I love it. It's one of those comedies that every time I catch it on TV, I'll sit and watch. Yeah. And it just cracks me up every yeah. time I see it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. And, you know, some of those early 2000s college comedies have not aged very well. Yeah. Uh, that one holds up pretty well, Sure though. does, yeah. 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 yeah, it's great. Uh, you know, yeah. it's Todd Phillips. He also did Road Trip. Recently watched Road Trip again. Eh. Eh. I'm with you. It's not, eh. Eh. It was so, funny the first time I saw yeah. it, but then it's now it's just, it's stupid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but old school is pretty funny. And there's, and there's things that we, there are jokes we can't even talk about on this oh, show. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. but, uh, Most of that just, entire movie. Yeah. <laughs> but let's just say uh, one of the college initiations involving cinder blocks. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'm like, I don't want to pledge if that's what yeah. I got to do. I don't yeah. trust you nope. guys. Nope. No way. Nope. Nope. <laughs> uh, good movie. Um, perfect amount of Will Ferrell because Will Ferrell, too much Will Ferrell can be overkill. It, it is, but yeah. he's just so just, enough. Just but, good enough. Oh, it's so good. And, yeah. uh, the part where he tranks himself. Like... <laughs> Oh, yeah. it's good stuff. Oh yeah. Um, so mine is a movie you might not have heard of called Shattered Glass. It doesn't ring a bell. It um, it is a film. It's a journalism film. I actually saw it when I was in college. We went down to uh, collegiate journalism conventions, uh, and they gave us a special early screening of this movie. And it's about Stephen Glass, who was a journalist that worked for the New Republic, and he fabricated dozens of stories. Okay. And it's how he cheated the system and managed to make it work and how he is discovered. And it's Hayden Christensen is the lead. Okay. I and like Hayden Christensen. I like Great him actor, too. Yeah. Uh, and this was the movie because this came out between episode two and episode three. And it was like everyone was crapping on his acting. And this came out and I was like, oh, wow. No, he's actually really great. Mm. And it frustrated me because you could see how good he was in this movie. And I'm like, you know, if he had better writing and better directing in those Star Wars prequels, he would have been a great Anakin Skywalker. And now we're seeing that with the Obi-Wan series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, I agree. He's, he's great fan. in that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's this kind of the movie that just made me, like, crystallized, like, my, my morals and my ethics when it came to journalism. It's got a great cast. Hank Azaria's in it. Steve Zahn, Rosario Dawson, Chloe Sevigny. It's mm. just a really good no, movie. I don't think I have seen yeah, this. No, yeah, no. Yeah, it's really good. Mm. Excellent. Shattered Glass. Shattered Glass. I'll have to put that on my list to watch. All right. What's your 2004? <sighs> i got to go with another uh, silly comedy, Dodgeball. Dodgeball, you know, yeah. Vince Vaughn yep. and everybody. It's one of those that still... Ben Stiller's character in that, to me... It, it almost made my list earlier was um, Heavyweights. Heavyweights. It's the same character. It, exact same character. So yeah. I just loved seeing that character reprised again and, and him having Yeah, I'm glad you that said that because when I saw that movie, I'm like, that's the, it's exact, the same, same it's character. It's the exact same character. Which is great because that yeah. was a great character in Heavyweights. Oh, hilarious. Um, so just hilarious. And to just yeah. see him get like... <laughs> more screen time and I, I you could almost see it as a sequel i know they're different names but completely like, different but if you look at it it's like yeah. it's just take that character yeah. and this is what happens after he loses the camp yeah he starts a gym <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah and, and so there it is yeah uh <coughs> and just uh, rip torn of you can dodge a wrench you, you can, can dodge, dodge a ball. ball again my kids that they still will quote that movie it's just so funny it's, it's so funny yeah just, it's 
it's just one There's of those a guy great in our group that's a pilot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he's like uh, Oh, uh, Steve the pirate! Steve the pirate. <laughs> His hair's cut. You're like, what are you? Talking about? And then when he tries to not be a pirate, it's just like, no, you're a pirate. He's like, <laughs> uh Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so mine is uh, the first appearance of a film by Edgar Wright on my list, Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. I love Shaun of the Dead. It's just one of those perfect movies in my mind, and it's. Probably one of the all-time great horror comedies. Oh, one of the best zombie movies, hands. Yeah, down. beyond beyond being a comedy, it's yeah. a great zombie movie. It is, yeah. and it's really funny. But like every time I watch it, it it sneaks up on me at how like emotionally affecting it is. Like when Sean's mother dies, yeah, it rips me apart. Like, or even like when his father dies, and but it's at the same time, it's like laugh out loud funny and like. And also legitimately scary at times. Like I don't know any other film that like does all those things Balances so well. It so well. Yeah. I it I really just I love the ride that one is. You know, it's all just gonna meet at the Winchester yeah. and that, that friendship that yeah. bonds him. Even at the end, he's yeah. in the garage. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Uh, those guys are hilarious together. I mean, Hot Fuzz. They've been in a bunch of movies yeah. together. And, uh, uh, and, the, and the writing, and it's uh, Simon Pegg wrote it with Edgar Wright. Yeah. Uh, the writing is just so precise. Like, there's not a wasted line in that. <laughs> like, it will set up things in the first act where it doesn't pay off until the third act oh, in yeah. terms of a joke. And it's just, it also has one of the great uses of a Queen song with Don't Stop Me Now. Oh my God, that with, is with, fantastic. With the, the beats Don't like, Don't Stop th- Me it's Now. Just, it's just so, I love, like, Edgar Wright is so good with the use of music. I just love that movie. That's a good one. That's excellent. All right, 2005. Oh, visually blew me away and actually so solidified my love for comic book movies, mm. Sin City. Oh, Sin City is amazing. Just yep. perfect. Yeah. Beautiful, perfect, and Mickey Rourke is unbelievable yeah. Yeah. in this movie. Yeah. That, and Just, it, he's oh. only in the first segment, yes, but he is but so memorable. So memorable. Just yeah. goosebumps thinking about his performance yeah. in that movie because it was so good. And I've seen a lot of his stuff and... Some of it is just crash, but man, he when yeah, he's when, on, oh my god, yeah, he when, is stellar. He's one of those actors that is, he's genuinely a great actor. Yes, but he can't get out of his way. That's the thing. Like, I mean, sometimes, he, man, he it just like the wrestler. Yeah, oh, so good. Man, uh, but, yeah, you know, so. even like in something like The Expendables, which is a trash movie. Yeah, yeah. he has one monologue in there where it's just like amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah. No, I love, uh, I love me. And what's yeah. amazing about Sin City is that it's one of the only films that basically uses the comic book as a storyboard. Yes. Because if you look at panels from the comic, it's like they just it, it, literally man, they, put it on it screen. It was the perfect adaptation of a graphic novel to a movie. Yeah. Like, beautiful. Yeah. I've never seen another movie that has matched it. Even Sin City 2, I felt, fell flat yeah. from what the first one did. Yeah, and it I think just, it's because that first one uh, really was just taking the books and putting it on the screen. And I know the second one also had the adaptations booked, but I also feel like they were kind of making it up a little bit more yeah. as they went. Yeah, yeah, And it just lacked focus. But yeah, that first movie, when you see it, it's just like, wow. Just and amazing. it's all digital. Like, that's oh, the that's crazy so thing. It's crazy. all digital. Like, you watch the making of it, and they're just walking around on blue blue screens. and Yeah, there's nothing there. Yeah. And then you get to see, um, oh, Elijah Wood yeah. playing a and psychopath. Just so you, creepy. You know, like, what is just sitting so there. So field from anything like, I've ever seen Elijah Wood in. Yeah, and it was like, and then the, all of a sudden he's that. I was like, what? Yeah. And it's like one of the first things he did after Lord of the Rings. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, like, what? <laughs> Frodo, no. no. <laughs> you let the ring consume you. <laughs> Uh, my movie uh, is Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Okay. Yeah. yeah all right. Uh, because I loved the Walls and Gromit shorts. I don't know if you've seen them. Oh, I have. Yeah, They're my great. Kids love Walls I remember and watching yep. them on PBS, and then I was going to grad school in England when Curse of the Were-Rabbit came out. So I just got this extra experience of seeing Wallace and Gromit 
in, in its England. native and yeah. so like it just felt like <laughs> it's natural habitat it did and like so it like i kind of not that, that i i hadn't walked the streets where it was set but i had walked like london streets and like english streets and so it felt like i was like there yeah. and like um and there is actually a cool thing like there was a a theater uh in bath england like a movie theater that i had been to and it was actually in the background of one of the scenes of the movie <laughs> so i was like okay all right that's cool but yeah i love wallace and gromit i love argument animation um and like there was also been a spin-off of uh Wallace and Gromit, Shaun the Sheep, which is also amazing. There's been a series. I've seen Shaun the Sheep. Shaun the Sheep but, is yeah. great. There's a couple movies. There was a holiday special that just came out last year. But I just love the whole universe of Wallace and Gromit, <laughs> and it's it's stop motion claymation, which nobody just, does anymore. And no. they do. It's yeah, it's it's, it's unmistakable amazing. when you see them. Yeah, yeah. And again, like with Edgar Wright, it's everything is just so perfectly timed because you have to with stop motion animation. You can't waste anything. So every no. joke is just perfectly precisely made. Yeah. Yeah, that would be such a thing to 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 make a stop motion picture. Like, yeah, you know, oh I actually God, the patience my, you must possess. When I was in what? seventh grade or no eighth grade, I did animation for a science fair project, and I did I think like two minutes worth of animation. Yeah, uh, and that took seven hours. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you, if you, are you familiar with the show Parks and Rec? Yeah. So Ben Wyatt's character is in between jobs and he makes the stop motion film and he's like, I compared this to Avatar. And it was like three seconds, the guy gets up. He's like, that was three weeks of my life. <laughs> you know? uh, so what is your 2006 movie? Oh, another visually stunning movie, uh, 300. Yep. With yep. Uh, Gerard Butler, yep. who my first introduction to him as an actor in, yeah, everything about that movie just blew me away. Where technology was going, in the cinemas at that time was just because that's another one fully yep. green screen. Yep. Um, and just epic. I thought they. I thought it was a great, entertaining movie. I loved it. Yeah. 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 We are Sparta. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. But yeah, and it's also very similar to, like you said, like Sin City of just. Yeah, visually a cutting edge at the time, yeah. and just a movie I had never seen like that before. You know, it was just epic. Yeah. And I, I think fantastic. kind of like with Sin City, it's one of those like. Lightning in a Bottle movies because they tried doing a sequel to that and one, and it was and it, it was wasn't. awful. Yeah. yeah, nothing. No, the first one that was it was Lightning in a Bottle. Like, yeah. what the heck is it? The fight yeah. sequences yeah. were un. Just I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. It blew me away. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, and I feel like that was sort of everyone's like introduction to Zack Snyder. Yes, um, and, and what an introduction. Yeah, it was. and I feel like that's Ooh. when he's still figuring himself, himself out, out and I was, think, and yeah. seemed more focused. Like. You know, I haven't really dug a lot of Zack Snyder's stuff, but, you know, I think he's kind of, I don't know. I, I, but yeah, that, I, 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 I can see, he was, you, like you said, he was still figuring it out, and yeah. I feel like now he's kind of maybe got his head up himself a little bit. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> 300's 300. Yep, 300 is 300. <laughs> um, mine is another kind of smaller film, uh, Stranger Than Fiction. Oh yeah, great movie yeah, with great Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell, yeah, yeah, fantastic. And it's like Will Ferrell dialed back, but I just love the premise of it. Yeah, it's not a Will Ferrell movie no. as the, you would think of. It's and very I just, yeah, and I just really love the good. premise of a guy who's hearing his own voice over narration, but it's like an omnipotent thing. It's right. a female voice, and it's the writer of a book. And, yeah, she's writing the book, and it's just and he just happens to be the main living character. Living out this life, but he's yeah. real. Yeah, and so then you get into this sort of moral. Uh, gray area where if your character was real, would you kill the character if you knew they were real? And it's just this fascinating moral question. Mm. And also it has this really great love story with Maggie Gyllenhaal. Has some of my favorite <sighs> romantic mo mo moments of ev any movie. When, like when he brings, he, she's a baker, so he brings her flowers, like bags of flour. <laughs> and like, that just breaks me. Like, I'm like, that is just the cutest thing ever. It's adorable. I love it. Yep. And that's one of those, like, sort of unsung movies where I'm like, you know, if you don't like Will Ferrell, please give this movie a chance because yeah, it's, it's so smart and it's so well done. It is, yeah. And it's not a Will Ferrell movie. No. Like, you would think, it, 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 with Will Ferrell being in it, that silly comedic. No, no it's not like that no. at all. There are this a couple is, moments yeah, where he, like, breaks are. because he's just like, shut up! Yeah, and losing his mind because <laughs> he doesn't know what the heck is going on. But, yeah, that's a very yeah. good movie. And it's yeah. got a great cast. Solid. It's uh, mm -hmm. Emma Thompson, Queen Lativa, uh, Dustin Hoffman. It's great. Yeah. Yep. 
Love it. Uh, so 2007. Oh, man, this was a part of a duo, uh, Death Proof. Oh, okay. And yep. I, uh, Tarantino and uh, Rodriguez mix on this. The great Death Grindhouse. Proof. Yeah, the Grindhouse. Did you get to see Grindhouse in theaters? Absolutely. Theater? Yeah. Because it was quite the experience. It, it, I've never got that experience, and none of us in our generation truly got yeah. that Grindhouse experience. No. So just to go and see these cheesy action flicks that were just passed around so much yeah. that they're just burning off, you know, burning through yeah, the yeah. film. I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was great. And uh, Kurt Russell is just the creepiest. I love, yeah, Death yeah, Proof. But, you know, Death Proof is like, ah. Planet Terror, uh, Rodriguez's film, it's fine. It's it's entertaining. Solid. But De Death, Death Proof, Proof is man, just amazing. what a freaking... That final sequence oh. where you have, I think it's Zoe Bell. Yes. Uh, who was Emma Uma Thurman's... Uh, Stunt double in uh, Kill Bill. Yep. Where she's on the roof of that car and they're actually doing it. Oh, and you man, can see her face. She is it's amazing. It. Oh, she's so awesome. Yeah. Um, she she was also in the Hateful Eight. Yeah. As the you know the stagecoach driver yeah. there. She didn't she didn't make it very long in that one. No. Spoiler. But, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, and I don't think a lot of people because Grindhouse did not do well in theaters. No, it cause, didn't because it was three hours long. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but what an experience, what, yeah, just to get a taste of what, I love Tarantino, so to see where he was coming from, trying to redo his childhood cinema experience, right. I just loved his take on it and, and got that feeling. I know of, you can now get the whole Grindhouse movie as, you can buy it on Blu-ray as yeah. that whole thing, yep. And because uh, I have Death Proof, and Death Proof, it is like an extended director's cut. And what the extended director's cut does that I don't like, because it ruins one of the best jokes in the film, is the missing real gag because there was this whole big setup where uh, if you said this phrase, you would get a lap dance. Oh, and so, yeah. And yeah. In the, when you saw it in theaters, they went missing real. And so they had this whole like setup that Kurt Russell was going to get this lap dance was missing real. You don't get to see right, the lap right, dance. Right, right, right. Which, like, that, I laughed so hard when I saw the that. The Grindhouse theater. experience, right. you know? That's, but when you watch it on, you know, DVD, Blu ray, you get the whole you thing. The whole thing. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I, I didn't need to see missed the lap the, dance. Like, the gag, I, yeah. I missed the gag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my 2007 one is Sweeney Todd. No, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's only Tim Burton I have on my movie. I do love Tim Burton. Yeah. Uh, this was my, I knew what Sweeney Todd was. I was somewhat familiar with it, but this was my first time actually seeing anything Sweeney Todd. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's solid. It's, I mean, and it's just, Carter, you can't yeah. go wrong. And there. it's just the Ooh. perfect marriage of content and filmmaker. Like, mm -hmm. I can't imagine anybody else bringing Sweeney Todd to film. Like, Tim Burton no, is just. No, I'll give you that. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Tim Burton's style just fits into that world yeah. so well. And yeah. And he does make some style like his choices that, like, some people say don't work. Because he leans way more into the darkness. Like, because Sweeney Todd on stage, it is satirical. It's like a dark comedy. Right. And a lot of that gets removed from the film version. But it's still also really funny in a really dark way. Oh, yeah. And Johnny Depp is surprisingly good singer for film at least for film yeah um, it does, it, it's just it's great in a lot of things he does yeah. except Willy Wonka I was not a fan of his yeah, Willy Wonka that, I, don't I don't know what, the what hell his, I, he was thinking I don't know what was going on there um, him and Tim Burton in in, the in past general have been fantastic and together. I feel like this was probably Tim Burton's like last truly great film he's made some ones since then that have been pretty good but like this was just like this was phenomenal. Yeah, this was good. I enjoy. I love Sweeney Todd. Yeah. yeah, that was great. Yeah, and Helen Bonham. Can't Helen Bonham Carter, Carter. Yeah, Helen Bonham Carter. Yeah, it's Mrs. Love is just <laughs> great. Yeah, <laughs> I love her in anything. I don't care what she's doing in the movie. I'm invested. Yeah, like, and what I did love about it was released on Christmas Day, which I have to like. Was it really? Yes, Sweeney Todd like, was released on Christmas Day. Yeah, I was like, Day. so the studio. I think it was DreamWorks to have the have the cojones wow. to release that on Christmas Day. I saw it on Christmas Day. That's I was like, crazy. Merry Christmas, Merry baby. <laughs> have a meat pie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 2008. 2008, we got to go with The Dark Knight. Mine too. Yes, you have got, to. I mean, you have to. Dude, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a perfect movie. Thank you. Yeah. It is a perfect movie. Take away Batman, all of that. Out of, it's so good. Yeah. Everything about it yeah. is excellent. And Heath Ledger, I mean, everybody knows yeah. his final performance. It was, my God. Yeah. The guy. It's one of the. Changed that character forever. Yeah. 
forever. Yeah. And oh, wow. it's one of the all-time great, outside of superhero, outside of anything, it's one of the all-time great performances, period. Of all time. Yes, it's of amazing. all time. Like, the kid, who knew? Yeah. He had th that in him. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's probably led him, you know, his mental health and everything yeah. didn't help him any, but my God. Yeah. Thank you for giving us that, because I will enjoy that yeah. performance. And he won an forever. Oscar posthumously. Sure did. And he and deserved it. Oh, so much. Uh, and yeah, it no. was that sor sort of the film that changed uh, the Oscars, because it was the first time... Superhero movie that superhero. Won, won an Oscar. But up to that point, there were only five movies in the category. After that, they actually expanded it to up to ten movies, so they, they could actually allow these other films in. Now, there still is this like bias towards comic book movies. They haven't really won that many. I, ironically, the only other person to win an Oscar for... Uh, <laughs> Was Joaquin Phoenix playing Joker, the Joker? Yeah, absolutely. It's like the only performance that's allowed to win. It, what is it about that perf character, that actor's? That's like the premier character yeah. for an actor to play, right? And it always has been since Jack Nicholson did yeah. it. Because it's a, it is a villain, but there's also more to it. There is a he's layer. Like, oh, it's he's complex. such a complicated character, and, it would, and it's just, complex for the audience too because you want to hate him. But you also kind of love him. Like oh, even, even him. Heath Ledger, who is psychotic oh, man, and creepy, but at the same time, terrifying. you're drawn to him. You it's magnetic. It is magnetic. And it, yeah, it, that really is, in my mind, like the perfect movie. Yeah. The and there's just Knight. so like, many, like, and it's, I, you could talk about Heath Ledger forever. Like the rest could, of it's yeah. great too, but just like so many little things, just like, the when he says hi to Harvey Dent, it's just hi. Yeah. Just the way he says hi. it, like it's not even a joke, but the way he does it is hilarious. Yeah, he masterfully done. Yeah, everybody was masterful in that yeah. movie. Gary Oldman is just yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it, it, I can't know, say enough only, good about the that only movie. thing Everything I would I might quibble about it is that I, I wish that there was maybe a little bit more time with Two Face, like. That arc is developed really well, but it feels slightly rushed. It, it, I, yeah, it did kind of feel slightly rushed with the Two-Face. He didn't get a lot of stuff to, to do with. Like he you, was really just went from the hospital to... That could, have, that could have been held for a whole other movie, but that is a quibble because it is done so well. The execution on it is so oh, good. Man, yeah. It's just like you kind of threw out a way to Two-Face a little bit. But I wonder if because of Heath Ledger's performance being so powerful, yeah. they didn't pursue anything further with Two-Face yeah. because they already had one that was right. just crushing. And it, and it led to the, the perfect ending. With I the, think uh, so. Like, oh. I, watching oh. it the first time when there's that monologue and you actually get to the meaning of the Dark Knight. Right, what he's all about. <laughs> like, oh, just, again, yeah. like, oh, yeah. I can but, be that. I can be the the, yeah. the victim or the yeah. villain here. You yeah. know, it's just, just instead so, of because it's just the so dichotomy good. of like Harvey Dent was the White Knight, he's the Dark Knight. I was right, like, Whoa. amazing. Yeah, 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 fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what do you have for two thousand nine? Man, two thousand nine is an offbeat movie featuring my absolute favorite actor of all time, and it's just him on screen, Moon. Oh, Sam yeah, Rockwell. So good. Um, just love everything yeah. about it. The premise of it, his performance in it is stellar. Performance is. Performance is, yes. Because uh, the whole thing is it's this <sighs> guy who's up on the moon, he's supposed to be doing research, and then you discover, spoiler, that he's just a clone, and there's a whole underground just They last, what, three or four years? Something like that. And then they die, and yeah. a new clone takes their place, and yeah. it's so good. And the moral dilemma that they find themselves in. Right. It's just excellent. Yeah, I yeah love one it. of them's dying. The next one's like, yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Once they figure out who they are, what they are, yeah, it's it's great. The ending yeah. is is beautiful, I yeah. think. Um, and it's directed by David Bowie's son. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Little fun tri little trivia. Little, <laughs> yeah. little fun so trivia yeah. for you. But yeah, little... it's an amazing, small piece of sci-fi. Like, I feel like so many people forget that science fiction should have ideas in it and should make you think and so many of them just become these big blown overblown right. action yeah. movies or something like that no this is very oh, it's very well done because yeah. they're not i mean they're like uh what are they doing i forget what they're what they're even doing on the moon yeah they're doing some sort of research to like i think they are trying to mining I mining think. Yeah, yeah they're mining something yeah. or, or something and they just clone this guy to yeah. save on money and just leave him yeah 
just program his brain every three years. And yeah. Rip, 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 rip. It's, yeah. Yeah. So good. It's really good. excellent. Uh, mine is uh, Up, the Pixar movie. Oh, fantastic. Heartbreaking. Uh, heartbreaking. Oh. That first, like, if that first, like, 10 minutes where you just see this couple's entire relationship, if that doesn't just turn you into an absolute puddle, you're just... Oh, it was... I remember watching it like, what the hell? Yeah. This is a little... What are we watching? Yeah. What is this? Because yeah. this is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you're just like... Look at like, it's like... Yeah, if you if that doesn't break oh. you, then, like you have something broken inside. Oh yeah, of you. you're you're dead inside. <laughs> uh, and you then, watch this entire life yeah. span out in about three minutes, and it ends so sad. Yeah, and then but then there's also the the second big cry moment when he's looking through the photo album. And he thinks that, oh, he wasted his life. But then he goes past where he never went. And he sees how happy his wife was. It's just like, oh, oh yeah, it, it's Yeah, it's <laughs> but it's fantastic. I had to pick it because it was the theme for my wedding. Okay, yeah. We had, yep. we had balloons. We had... It's a good theme. It, it was a good theme. That's a beautiful theme. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Uh, but beyond just that love story aspect of it, just Russell and... <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> going yeah. going squirrel. to Paradise Island and yeah, and Doug the yeah, Doug Squirrel. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just so great. It's just, it's just Pixar is so good. Oh, Pixar is fantastic at yeah. making. They kind of lost their way a little bit, but that was still in that period where everything they did was just gold. Wally almost made the list for me. Wally is great, and, and that's another one that, that will just tear that you up. Rips me up every time. I yeah, when they have their little I space it was dance. So good. Oh, so good. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Uh, so 2010. <sighs> Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh, that's another good horror comedy. Oh, fantastic. The best horror comedy yeah. in my mind. Like, yeah. it's the perfect mixture of gore, slasher, comedy. Yeah. And just taking I the idea... And the characters are Taking the idea hilarious. of, like, the, the rednecks that you think are the killers. Right. right. And they're the nicest guys. The nicest guy. <laughs> but just so misunderstood. And yeah. then the... the the normal kids yeah. are, turn out to be the psychopath. Yeah. It's just hilarious how they yeah. wrote that. And all the kids are dying at their own hands by yeah. mistake. It, right. It's just so funny. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mine is Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Oh, good one. Uh, yeah. This, you probably, other than like movies that I like grew up with and have nostalgia for, this is like the movie I've become the most obsessed with okay. in like the last like decade plus now. <laughs> Uh, I adore this movie. Uh, I just love, it's another Edgar Wright movie. And just that, it's just such a pastiche of all these different genres. You have video games, uh, kung fu, musicals, yeah. comedy, uh, all smashed together into this blender. It's so well done. Yep. Uh, the jokes are so fun. Oh, can you do a thingy? <laughs> <laughs> can you, you mean a grindy, a grind? Yeah, yeah can you do, do a, a grind a thingy? thingy? <laughs> It's and, so good, yeah. Yeah, it, and yeah. you know, and everybody's so well cast. You have Kareem Culkin as his gay roommate. Yeah. Uh, you have Chris Evans as just this arrogant actor. I mean, anytime you can make Michael Sarah into a badass yeah. and pull it off, you've done a pretty good job. Because yeah. that kid is like the least badass person you yeah. would ever think. Uh, and the more I watch it, like, the more like uh, I see more in it. Like it because when I first watched it, I was like, oh, I was kind of just like in awe of it. But then I'm like, Scott's kind of a, not a good guy. No, and really. that's kind of what it, it's about is like, and Ramona Flowers is not a, his love interest. It's not a very, but it's them like going through this journey to get to a point where they can actually maybe be good for each other. Yep. Yep. Uh, and it's, the, I've read the comics, I've played the games, I've got the toys. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Excellent. Uh, so, 2011. The only Marvel movie that has made my list, um, Immortals. I loved The Immortals. Um, oh no, it's not a Marvel movie, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, my head was in two spots. Yeah. I'm thinking um, another Mickey Rourke amazing performance yeah. as the bad guy in Immortals. Okay. Stellar. I don't think I've seen it. St I really? I don't think I've seen oh it. Oh my God. Henry Cavivo is Superman. And yeah. oh my. He, no, he gets the Icarus bow. And oh my. Yeah, I missed it. I heard it wasn't very good. And I kind of just skipped I, it. A lot of people did not like it. I thought Mickey Rourke's performance. That's what sold the whole movie yeah. for me. Is his. He's so nasty and yeah. evil. But oh, he's so good at it. Yeah. And just loved it. Yeah. yeah. The tale of the. You know, all the. I love Greek mythology anyway. Yeah. So that whole movie is. 
all about that. Yeah, yeah. All the gods come down to, to fight off the titans that are released, and yeah, it's yeah. just, yeah, epic. Yep. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll have to check it out. I'll yes. have to give it a shot. Uh, mine is, and I have a very conflicted relationship with this filmmaker, uh, is Midnight in Paris. It's a Woody Allen film. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I grew, I didn't grow up, but I like, for a while, Woody Allen was like a very formative filmmaker for me. We don't need to get into like what Woody Allen <laughs> may or may not have done, but it's, it's yeah. complicated. Leave ya! Uh, so like, I debated whether or not to include, include this movie, but I love it so much because it's Owen Wilson, uh, and he is a like failed writer, and he's in Paris with his girlfriend, and he finds this way to magically go back to the 1920s. And so he's hobnobbing with all these artists and writers. And it's just very magical. And Owen Wilson was one of the only actors, because every movie that's a Woody Allen film, the main character is always just basically Woody Allen, even if it's not played by Woody Allen. And Owen Wilson was one of the only people to like put his own stamp on it because, you know, he's, he's Owen Wilson. Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's the only, so he kind of brings some of that sort of Owen Wilson vibe yep. to a Woody Allen movie. And just that blend works really well for me. I love Owen Wilson in the, the Loki series. Yeah, he's so good. He was so fantastic in that. Yeah. I've never seen that Midnight in Paris. I've it's, heard of it. I yeah. know of it, but I don't think I've ever sat and watched it. It's really it. cool. Um, and you do have like Adrian Brody as uh, Salvador Dali yeah. and, and uh, Corey Stahl, Stahl, who was in uh, Quantumania, who was uh, Modoc. Modoc. Um, he's uh, <laughs> Ernest Hemingway. All right. Uh, uh, Kathy, Kathy Bates is Gertrude Stein. Like, it's really good. Oh, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, yeah I love the cast. Yeah. So, uh, tw uh, 2012. 12. Seven Psychopaths oh, for me. Oh, that's a good movie. Yeah, just yeah. another great Sam Rockwell yep. performance, as well as everyone else in the Colin Farrell. Uh, oh, my God. Just yeah, it's so loaded. It's such a so, stacked it's cast. It's stacked. And Walken's in there. Yeah, Walken's fantastic. Um, uh, Tom Waits is in there. Yeah, it's yeah. just a great action. Uh, not really an action movie. Not really movie. an action movie. Uh, it's... Done by a playwright, um, I can't remember his name right now, um, who he also did Three Billboards. Yes, uh, that is uh, Martin McDonough. Yes, Martin McDonough. Fantastic uh, who is playwright. Now, uh, the uh, Banshees of Air Shin, which is now up for a bunch oh, of Oscars. It he, should win, too, yeah. because have you seen it I yet? I haven't watched it yet. It's amazing. Yeah. It but is I, amazing. I love him as a writer. Another great film for him is In Bruges. Yes. Such a good yes. film. Yes. But he writes these characters that feel incredibly real. So real. Yeah. He, and he, he can build a world that you're just immediately in. Yeah. You, you buy every part of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just love it. He's masterful. Yeah, he's Witty. A, comedic. But at times, like, really serious yeah. and thought-provoking stuff is going yeah, he, on. He and really... And moral, yeah, and he goes down that line uh, where, like, it'll be, like, very funny, but then very, very dark. Very dark. And, and it's, like, right going, like, and, right through and that. And weaves through yeah. it beautifully where yeah. you're, like, you're, you're in. Even the darkest parts of that, that, yeah. that tale, you're still laughing through some of it and just, yeah, yeah I love it. Seven Psychopaths. Seven Psychopaths is great. Uh, I went with the first Avengers. Yes. Excellent. Uh, just because the fact that they pulled it off... Yeah, um, that first time, like <laughs> yeah. nobody believed it. Like this was a weird little experiment that uh, Marvel Studios was doing, where they were introducing their heroes. <laughs> and look what every, it is now. And yeah, look what it is now. But like everyone is kind of just like they're not going to be able to pull it off. No one's done this before. And that first Avengers movie, it holds up still. Oh, it's excellent. Uh, yeah, it works really well. Uh, the characters, uh, even if you haven't watched the other ones, there's enough in that. That you get their motivations, you you get yep. the infighting. It, it works, and having Loki uh, be the villain in that he'd ha he'd been introduced in Thor, uh, it, it it just works. Yep. yep. And then how they you know how they built that character since then uh, has been fascinating. Oh but, yeah. Uh, just the dynamics work in that. Uh, it's just you know, how they used Agent Coulson. Like it's just it yep, works. I agree. It works. It, it, it really helped solidify the universe yeah it was it like you know now. if like, it, it was a make no or break stopping it now yeah <laughs> yeah you know? that was a make or break if that didn't <clears> succeed <throat> it would have been like all right it was a it was an interesting experiment but it, it failed right uh, and that, but but I from mean, there they were able to phase build phase five phase five you yeah. know 
almost 40 movies in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With all the shows and everything. Yeah, if you include yeah, the I mean, shows, yeah. And shows, we're, there's a lot. There's a lot going on there. So what is Ooh. your 2013? We got to get going. We got 25 minutes left. Ooh, this is the end. All right, yeah. Uh, just a great comedy with, with, with your guys in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, yeah. another one of those that this is uh, fantastic. Yeah, Cinema and it's, Peg it's is all fantastic the, and... oh no, that, that's mine. That was, mine's the world's end. Yours is... Oh, yeah, yeah you're we right. got the mixed up. I, yeah. yeah, this is another Seth Rogen. This is yeah, another Seth Rogen. The same movie, just same a different mo- cast. Yeah, I remember we these. It's very, confu- it's yes. very confusing because mine is <laughs> the world's end. It's like, yeah, this is the end, the world's end. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's have all, you have all these guys playing versions of themselves. Version, I, versions yeah, of themselves. versions of themselves. Uh, so, well, you got Seth Rogen. Uh, <laughs> Jonah Hill. Jonah you've Hill. Got Michael Sarah. You've got... Yeah, and Michael Sarah being an absolute oh, a-hole. He's hilarious. He dies yeah. immediately yeah. in the movie. And that's the Spoiler, whole thing. It's, it's the coming. It, yeah. it's, it's the apocalypse. So there's, there's a little a clip where in, in the movie he slaps Rihanna right yeah. in the butt. And, so he asked her... At the filming, can he really smack her? And, and she and goes, yes. Yes, but I get to slap you back. So that's a real slap. When she turns and cuffs him, <laughs> yeah. that's her cuffing him. Because yeah. he and gets... he goes down. <laughs> um, and I just, oh. like, I <laughs> walked into that movie because Ashley and I went, my wife and I, Ashley and I went to see a, a different movie and it just happened to be playing early. Okay. And so we walked in like blind. What a pleasant surprise. And it was just like, oh my God. So like when the giant demon... I don't want to, but you know what I'm talking uh, about. Yes, I do. When it starts, I was like, "Oh my god, oh. what am I? What am I looking at?" <laughs> but it is quite, it is an experience. It, it is, is absolutely yeah, an experience. It, it, it's, they're all friends. They all started kind of together. And yeah. It's just seeing all of them come together to just be completely yeah. ridiculous. Yes, yeah. and and the Channing Tatum cameo. That's oh, all I'm going to say. Channing Tatum That's all I'm gonna cameo. Gonna say. Uh, yeah, can't really talk about that. Yeah, uh, but mine, <laughs> mine is the world's end, which is Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg. They do all these different genre like homages. I won't even say they're parodies; they're homages. So, yeah. so Shaun of the Dead was zombies, Hot Fuzz was action. This is sort of the alien invasion the alien movie. Alien invasion, yeah. And but was what is so interesting about it, like it's a really funny alien invasion movie, but it's also a very serious exploration of addiction and oh, alcoholism. Yeah. And when it gets to that, and you realize that's what the movie's really about, it really hits hard. I love that movie. It's yeah. great. That's, it's funny we were talking about that. Uh, so, 2014. Oh, what we do in the shadows. Oh, I love what we do in the shadows. <laughs> love Taika Waititi. I mean, it, it, that's his brainchild, and it's yeah. just so hilarious. It's so great. They're filming a second one now. Um, I'm so excited. Oh, are I they? Love, yeah, they are. They're, okay. They're coming and out the series them. is great, too. It, it, I love it. And it's, yeah. uh, for people that don't know, it's this mockumentary about vampires. About vampires. <laughs> and it's so In good. modern day, and it's just so... In, the, the movie, if you haven't seen it, they, they take place in New Zealand. Yeah. This is like a town of wherever there is, like 5,000 people total. So, so yeah. it's, oh, it's just so good. They're it's so, so hilarious. Yeah, the, the world that he built there is is beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, the I show the movie. I love Taika yeah. Waititi. I love his sense of humor. Oh yeah, it's it, yeah. Uh, and so what I have is the Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, what a good one! Love that. Love we that talked movie. about Wes Anderson in the last episode. I just love how he constructs his films. It's another filmmaker that just perfectly structures his films. Yep. Knows exactly what he's doing. Not a wasted frame. Not a wasted line of dialogue. Yeah. And I feel like Grand Budapest Hotel is the most Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson movie. Like all I of his you... idiosyncratic things, it's all there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great. It's a great movie. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I'd get into it more, but we do have to like yeah, keep let's... moving yep. forward. So 2015. 2015 uh, the Hateful Eight. Oh, my yep. absolute favorite Tarantino movie, hands yep. down. Kurt, I can't, yep. I can talk about this movie for hours. And hours you know, and I, hours. I've been advocating for this and like maybe he'll do it. That needs to be put on stage. Oh my god, it would be so it, long. It, it, I, it, it would be, but oh, no. I would love to do it. It, it would be three Where's hours, but there it? have been three hour plays. Oh, there's way longer yeah. plays. Uh, um, that but, would be amazing. I mean, the way do. it's structured, absolutely. It's structured as a play. There is sure. an intermission. Yeah, there's an intermission. It's one set, no, never changes. Right. It would be awesome. It would be yeah, great. Yeah, I hope he does, because yeah. I, I, I would it, love it to see more Tarant- Tarantino do anything on the yeah. stage. I mean, Please. basically, it is like. 
all the warehouse scenes from Reservoir Dogs yep. for an entire movie, but set in the Old West. Yep. Love it. It's it, great. It's fantastic. And like, I've heard him talk about how he wanted to do, like, he's like, he said that, uh, like, Westerns in like the, the 70s, they always had like the guest star. And yeah. this was like the whole movie of those guest stars. Yes. And they're all deplorable. Oh, and man, yeah. it's just, it's great. It, everything about that, it, every, every word of dialogue in that movie is excellent. Yeah, and, and just <laughs> mine is uh, you know, just probably the most perfect action movie ever. Mad Max Fury Road. <sighs> like, just from beginning to end, it's just pure action, perfectly directed. Uh, and it's a great example of just filmmaking, storytelling through the filmmaking. They're, it's not dialogue heavy, no. but you understand the story very clearly. Yep. And a lot of people say, "Oh, there's there's no plot here," but you could you could say that because or the plot is very thin, but it is still very much about something. It is about you know feminism. It's about uh, re equality, equality, discovering your humanity. Because yeah. at the beginning of the movie, Max has completely lost touch with his humanity, and by the end, he's rediscovered it. Right. Uh, at least, yeah, found a reason to rediscover right. that. You know, yeah, there's hope. There's, there's, I think. Yeah. Know, I think it plays into the original Mad Maxes. I mean, you could just pick right up in the storyline yep. where this is just another generation of people. Yep. And just continue and in this world that they build, this, this apocalyptic And I just watched, wasteland. Uh, there is a black and white version of it. Ooh. And it, it's, it's really good, actually. Oh, but the visuals in that were so insane. Well, the visuals are still great in black and white. And, like, George Miller, the director, talked about how uh, he kind of intended it to be black and white because color is just another uh, thing that kind of distracts you sometimes. And so by pulling out the color you're able to just focus even more on the visual, more on the story. Mm. You, it, it mm. work, it's just I'll as beautiful. You should check it out. Yeah, it out. I, I would. I'll check that out. Uh, so 2016. 2016. Very odd movie, but two actors that are powerhouses. Swiss Army Man. Oh, yep. Um, such a weird concept for a movie, but it works. Yep. And it's it, Paul Dano is amazing. I mean, they're both Daniel Radcliffe and Paul Dano are just powerhouses in and, today's... And why did you explain well, the premise of this movie? Because it's insane. It's insane. Um, so a man is law, uh, deserted on an island and a dead body washes up on the beach that possesses magical powers. <laughs> like fresh water will come out of his mouth. Yeah. It, he's a Swiss army man. Yeah. So he uses this corpse to survive. Yeah. And to get off the island in the most insane way yeah. you could possibly think. Yeah. It, it, but if you get past this, it, it, and it really all boils down to Paul Dano is just completely out of his mind. Yeah. S stalking his neighbor? Yeah. Or something like, he's just in her backyard. It's almost Through like... the whole movie. It's almost it, like... It, it's just so crazy. Yeah. It's almost like he did Castaway, but instead of Wilson the Volleyball, you have... Daniel Radcliffe as a yeah, dead Daniel guy. Radcliffe as a dead body, and as the movie progresses, he becomes more and more alive. Yeah. It's just so wild, but two actors that are masters yeah. of their craft at an early age. I can't wait. I love their careers. Yeah. I'm going to follow them forever because they're yeah. both just insanely uh, Mine is La La Land. Oh, really good movie. Yeah, I really love Ooh. La La Land. And it was one of those movies that like, when I saw it, it just profoundly affected me. Like I came out of that movie just feeling energized. Like, I want to create. I want to make something. Because mm. it really is kind of a tribute to creative people mm. and finding their path and, like, finding a way to do what you want to do, what you love the most. Yeah. Uh, and it is also a love story, and it is also this tragic love story, and the sacrifices you have to make for your your craft, or do you choose love? And right. it's And it's yeah. also a, a musical, and... It's just great. Yeah, I agree. I love it. Um, yeah, all oh, it's yeah. fantastic. All right, so 2017. Oh, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. And there, there he is again. And, and, yeah, there he is again because yeah. he is excellent. Another Sam Rockwell. Another Sam Rockwell. Another Martin McDonough. Yeah. I can't say enough good about it. Um, it, it won several Oscars, I believe. Did, he yeah. won an Oscar. Yeah. Sam Rockwell did for Best Supporting Actor yeah. in Francis this. Francis McDermott won. Who... 
So good. It's so good. And here it is. This is just a, a beautiful film tale. that takes on racism. Oh, um, uh, just but yeah, so a many lot films. of different t- topics like racism. Just yeah, just the mental health aspects. Mental health. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It, but it's so, good. so often when you do a film that takes on an issue, whether it be like racism, mm. and, and and Sam Rockwell is just deplorable. Deplorable. But by the end, but what? But he, he gets what an arc. What I mean, the arc they he give. He genuinely oh, redeems himself. He really does, and he sees the errors of his ways. Yeah. I love. Uh, but so many. Love films, it. What I was going to say. So many films that take on an issue or multiple issues get really hand fisted or heavy handed. Here. It doesn't because it's so based in the characters. Oh man, and they're so well written. Uh, Frances McDermott's character in this movie is just so powerful. Yeah, and she gives a speech to the priest. Yeah, about being culpable. Yeah, it, 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 I uh, it's, I don't want to get into it, but yeah, oh, yeah, ah, 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 yeah, ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Every part of that is like, ah, yeah. Ah. Mine. Uh, it is my favorite movie in the MCU. It's Taika Waititi again. It's <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok has uh, to be it. F- I love hilarious. the tone of it. I yep. love that it, it came in a time when the MCU was kind of becoming a little stale. Not that I don't didn't like the films, but here it there was a distinct formula, a distinct tone, and here Taika Waititi came in with a very vibrant visual style, a very distinct sense of humor and mm. tone, and reinvigorated the Thor character because the, oh, yeah. the second Thor film is, I was is not a big fan. It's but the worst in the MCU oh, yeah. in my eyes. But Ragnarok. It's just so yeah. funny. It's I, I love Korg, the little uh, the little rock creature. <laughs> cool. This is my buddy Meek. Uh, it's just so... It, it just has that perfect tone. And it also still has have heart. Like there's the elevator scene between Thor and Loki where they just have a little chat and there's not really any jokes. And... It's short, but it has all the emotion in it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They play that that, that the brothers very yeah. well there. You know the the struggle that they both had to to be their own individual person. You Loki's know, like, and yeah, it, you know, Taika Waititi beautiful. did another one this past year, Love and Thunder. I also loved it. I don't think it's as good as uh, Ragnarok. A lot of people said it pushed the silly too far. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I love Taika Waititi's sense of humor. You push the silly too far, though. We're in, the, we're in the comic book yeah. universe. Yeah. It gets pretty ridiculous. It, it, it does. So why not just <laughs> yeah. embrace that? Embrace it. Which I feel the new Ant-Man yeah. did very well. Yeah. Um, uh, so we got... 2018. 2018. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Oh, that's a great one. Uh, Coen Brothers. Coen Brothers. I love a good Western. And this one just... And it's an anthology, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love it. It is all those little quick, little scenes of different yeah. people's lives in, in, the, in the Wild West. And... Uh, I just love it. The yeah. old prospector clip is yeah. is my favorite. Mr. Yeah. Pocket. Uh, I love crazy. just the uh, the one at the, the the hangman one, where they're just oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just like okay you know, first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen it one time. I need to see it again. But like it oh it's, it's excellent. It's yeah, excellent. The, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs yeah. I thought was perfect yeah. movie. Love it. It's satirical, but it, it's still and here's the, the, thing. the end. The end sequence is so good. Yeah. And here's the thing, because it is an anthology, if you don't like one scene, just wait for the next one. Just wait for the next one. Yeah. You're good. Yeah, Yeah, it's fantastic. You'll find one you like, I guarantee it. Uh, So, 2018. Yes. Uh, Oh, wait, you just did yours, right? So, mine is uh, Star is Born. Yeah, Um, excellent. You know, I've only seen it the one time, but it still sticks with me. There are, there are sequences in that, even though I've only seen it, that I could like play in my head right now. Mm-hmm. It made such an impact on me. Uh, like there's this, it's a, such a small moment, but it's Sam Elliott has just had a fight with Bradley Cooper, their mm-hmm. brothers. And you know, Bradley Cooper is an alcoholic and he just, it's just Sam Elliott turning around, backing his truck back, and you just see he's just welled up with tears. It's such a small moment, but it's one of like the best acting mm. moments I've seen in like a decade. It's so perfect. Mm. And that first, like I'd say like the first 45 minutes of that movie, where you have Bradley Cooper, this washed up artist, who meets Lady Gaga's character, who sees her talent and says, I want to help this person. That first 45 minutes is just perfection. Mm. It's just done so well. And when they first, Lady Gaga's character, like, first gets drawn on stage and per, to perform, 
that just is such a punch. And it's oh, the yeah. song Shallows, which won an Oscar, became oh, a huge yeah. hit. But such, like that first time, such a punch. She's amazing. Yeah. She what? is amazing. Yeah. And who would have thought Bradley Cooper had the chops he's got? I didn't think he could sing that well. Yeah, and and he wrote and directed. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it's a crazy it, it amount of time. It is a talent. remake. They've done that. The stars. It's been done multiple times. Multiple times. Yeah. but this is a fantastic yeah. version. Yeah, I think it's the like fourth version yeah. of it, but yeah. it's still amazing. Beautiful. So 2019, <sighs> Joker. Joker. All right. I mean, all right. Joker. Joaquin yeah. Phoenix. I didn't think anybody could beat Heath Ledger's performance. Joaquin Phoenix gave one that matches yeah. toe to toe. I feel different. Yep. Completely different, yep. but still just as masterfully done. Yep. What a character study. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's a character Woo! study. Some people have been really turned off by it uh, because it's so dark and so grim. But what it actually has to say about <sighs> mental health, the degradation of society. Oh my God. Like, it's, and that ending. <clears throat> oh my God. The ending uh, at the talk show Oof. oh it's so good it's but so good. It, it, it all about mental health and the lack yeah. of help yeah there and then just the total nonchalantness that people will give you and have you like, seen there's an animated clip where somebody does that scene that the and it's goofy as the joker and <laughs> winnie the pooh is the touch <laughs> no it's so funny you should find it it's amazing i'll, I'll youtube that uh, later that my is great <laughs> my 2019 is once upon a time in hollywood oh yes yeah uh, yes, I had a lot of like because I always had like a runner up. I had a lot of Tarantino movies in the runner up position. This is the only one that made my list, um, and I don't even know if it's because it's my favorite. But like, I love this movie because it's such like a hangout movie. It's just mm. all these characters hang hanging out, but it's also this revisionist history uh, with the, the whole Manson family and uh, yeah, Sharon yeah. Tate and oh, like. Yeah. That ending, where it, the ending is hilarious, but like the final it's poignant brutal. moment, it's Woo! brutal. But that final final scene, where it's like Sharon Tate gets to live, and it's from above, yeah, and it's so poignant because it is this like, well, this this big what if, like, what if this was right? True? It, it, I really like how he does that. He did that with Inglorious Bastards, yeah. like, well, what if? Yeah, you know, it could have ended this way. Yeah. I would have much preferred the ending that yeah. he wrote than the real happenings. But, but uh, you know, it's it's three hours, nearly three hours long, but like it doesn't feel like so it. Good. Uh, so good. Just the interactions good. between yeah. uh, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. And then it's this whole like middle sequence where it's Leonardo DiCaprio going to film a show. Oh. And he this little conversation oh. he has with the girl. Like it's all it's so masterful. good. I got to be, I was when we went down to Hollywood and did the Universal Studios, yeah. we got to drive through that set. Oh, where great. They, where they do, yeah, yeah, where yeah. they film that yeah. whole sequence. Yeah. I was like, oh! <laughs> yeah. All so right, so cool. we got we got three years left and we got seven minutes, so we got to go. All right. Uh, to 2020? Yes. Love and Monsters. Oh, I love that movie. It is, right? It's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So, you I, know, it's this uh, sort of post-apocalyptic thing, and there's all these monsters, and it's them trying to survive it, like, but it's also this love story. Yeah, a beautiful love story, a coming of, like, an age almost, yeah. like, learning your true potential and what you can do compared to what you think yeah. you can do, and love it. I thought it was great. Well done, entertaining yeah. as all heck, yeah. and I hope they make more because yeah. I'm in. And it, it's also one of those films that proves that you can make a, a sci-fi movie with lots of monsters and stuff and do it on a relatively small budget. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. And still be amazing. I went with uh, The Birds of Prey. Uh, let me do the whole title here. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 The Fans. whole title. The whole title, yeah. I, I, That's great. <laughs> right. um, I was a big it. fan of Margot Robbie's uh, Harley Quinn. Her first introduction, the, the Suicide Squad movie, was not very good. The no. first one. Yeah. Uh, but she was great in it, and I love what they did in this movie. I love its themes. It's sort of a Me Too kind of themed movie. Uh, Ewan McGregor's Black Mask is, is like... One of these characters where you're like, oh, he's kind of likable, but then when he goes to a dark place, it is disturbing. Yes, quite. <laughs> but the whole ensemble's great. Uh, the title is kind of unfortunate because it's the Harley Quinn movie, but it's called Birds of Prey. Yep. So, you know. Yep. But I love it. I love Margot Robbie and I love the tone of it. It was the first superhero movie written and directed by women, which is kind of sad that it took to 2020. I thought Wonder Woman was. It was directed by a woman, but it wasn't, it wasn't written, written by. Oh, okay. So okay. This is, that's, that's its no. distinction. Oh, okay. That's its distinction. Yeah. It's an excellent movie. Yeah. 
And what's your 20? Oh, wait, no. Do you, do you I did. Do I did Love and Monsters. Uh, yeah. So 2021. Uh, I had to do a Ghostbusters Afterlife. So, so did I. Nice. Yeah. Yes. It was, I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. I thought it was perfect. Yeah. A perfect sequel to what I knew and loved as a kid. Yeah. Uh, take a, you know, not to mention the female version that they did. Eh. Yeah, I like it. It, it was okay. Yeah. But this one felt more in line with yeah. the real Ghostbusters because they're all still in it. And they paid yeah. a beautiful homage to... Uh, Harold Ramis, yeah. I, I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, uh, loved it. Yeah, loved it, it is absolutely above all else a tribute to Harold Ramis. Oh, yes. And it's handled well. Um, it does... And this is, there's, you know, this can be a very iffy thing. It does resurrect him. But the way it's done is very tasteful. Very tasteful. They don't put a word in his mouth. Yeah. He's just a spirit taking care of his family. Right. I loved it. Yeah. I, I loved how they did it. I didn't think if I was his family, I would have been honored beyond yeah. all to see that portrayed, to him yeah. portrayed in that light. And I think in the this, reason, in this I think the reason it works is that Egon was already a character in that movie yeah. as an unseen spirit. So when he yeah. actually materializes, you're invested. So you're, it, yeah, you've already known. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a cheap gimmick, like, oh, hey, no. here he is, you know. No, I thought it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah I loved it. And McKenna Grace as, as Egon's granddaughter. Nails she's, it. She's just perfect. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> I, speaking of somebody you, you, you want to follow as they get old, I mean, she's only... I think she was like 12 when she filmed it. Uh, Jeez. Maybe, maybe 13. Uh, she's amazing. And yeah. like, I, I can only imagine how much better she's going to get. She's also a, a pretty good singer-songwriter. Uh, she's released some songs. Uh, she actually has a song over the closing credits. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, I didn't but yeah, know that. loved it. Yeah, I, I'm with uh, you. And was, there's, there's another one coming out I this can, year. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm, I think that was... One of the best remakes, not remakes, but, but continuations. continuations that I've seen. In I a think long, they call them legacy sequels because it's a sequel, but it's kind of a, a, reboot, a new reboot. But you have the original characters. Right. There. Yeah, I love, yeah, I love it. So this brings us up till just last year. Yes. <sighs> Bullet Train. Yeah. yeah. Ah, it's so entertaining. Yeah. It's not saying anything. No. It's just pure entertainment. Yeah. I've and seen, I think they watched nailed it. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Loved all the characters. Tangerine and Lemon are the hands of the funniest yeah. duo I've seen in a movie in so long. Yeah, they're, and Brad Pitt had even said, like, he wants to produce a movie that's based on them. It would have to be spoiler or prequel. Oh my god, yeah. But, uh, please do, because I'm in, their because characters they were so great. Amazing. Yeah. And I didn't realize that's the kid from Kick Ass. Yes, it is. And it blew me away. I'm yeah. like, what a glow up this dude's yeah. had. Look at him. <laughs> he is Jack. Like, what? Yeah, and he's so funny. Oh, and, like, hilarious. They're. they're like adopted brothers, uh, and <gasps> just the whole thing with the Thomas the Tank stickers. It was beautiful. Just every bit of that yeah. movie, I was like, I was watching it on the flight back from California, yeah. and was like, yeah. And Brad Pitt, I, I love, loved it. I just love laid back com comedic Brad oh, Pitt. His character so oh, I'm the unluckiest guy in the world, and yeah. all of this stuff happening to yeah. him is like beyond the luckiest stuff that could ever happen to anybody yeah, yeah. loved it it's, yeah. and it's a great ensemble uh it, yeah it's, yeah just it, it seemed like it's a one of the of directors guys having a blast enjoying this work and man it yeah and it's just, one of the guys behind the john wick series yes, and the action is it's great it's ex excellent yeah just yeah. such an entertaining fun movie to yeah watch. and that's it it's just a just fun, fun movie yeah, yeah, yeah i had so much fun just watching it it was like whoa. uh so mine uh is everything everywhere all at once. Okay. Uh, you know, I went into this movie knowing it was kind of a multiverse movie, but not mm -hmm. really knowing what it is. And it's just such a wild ride of a movie. Mm. Uh, and just, and, and what blew me away is that, and everybody's talking about his comeback, the, the kid that was short round and in Goonies. Yes. He's the male lead in it, and he is phenomenal and it makes me so upset that we missed out on like 30 years of this guy acting because he's so good and he has to play multiple versions mm -hmm. of the same guy the way he switches back and forth between the two different personas uh and it just also has this really great theme of hope and optimism and love and how that can be your way forward to a better life and it's just mm. It's just such a crazy wild ride. I, 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 I was talking to the, uh, the manager of the movie theater here, and he said, yeah, we only had it for a week because people went into it and came out hating it. And I'm like, I, I, I guess it's just such a weird movie that maybe people can't get into it, but 
you got to give it a chance because yeah. it, yeah, it is strange. It is weird, but just maybe like, not a movie theater experience movie. That one's more not. that you need to. To sit and digest at the house, yeah, where you have time. But there I are think. some crazy visuals but in it that I wish I could have seen on the big screen. So I missed it on the big screen. Yeah. But um, you wanted to today what you uh, what you're looking forward to this year. Oh my! The biggest one on the list would be the next chapter of John Wick. John Wick yeah. Four. Let's see how this thing ends up. Yep. Uh, Keanu Reeves is amazing. Yeah. What a great guy, just in general as a person, and he makes some really entertaining movies. He does. So in the John Wick franchise is awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the one I'm most looking forward to. You know, seeing there's a year. lot coming out. Uh, you know, the there's movie a lot. There's, this this weekend we got Cocaine Bear coming, <laughs> so like, I'm I'm pretty excited for Cocaine Bear. <laughs> oh, oh man. and Renfield with uh, Renfield, Nicolas Cage Renfield, that's right. And Dracula. So there's a lot that's of good right. stuff coming out. There but is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we we did it. We got we, it. We got through we, it. We got it all. So yeah, come back and get Lost in Movies again.